for holding him over the sun and said all your for club competition matches this week in memory of the victims of those deadly floods in Valencia and to all of those impacted in the region and beyond. This is Five Live from the BBC. This is the league phase of the Europa League. Match day four, Manchester United with three draws out of three so far and up against Pauk Salonika from Greece. The Pauk, by the way, I'm, I, I don't know how I'm doing this to myself, Izzy, but I'm going to try. Pauk, what it stands for, Panasekologos, Athleticus, Omelos, Konstantinolipitin. So I think we'll stick to Pauk. I'm glad you said that. That was <laughs> mightily <laughs> impressive, though. Not really. <laughs> I've been practising that all afternoon. There's a good reason they go for the four initials. So, Manchester United to get it started. Rasmus Holden touches the ball to Bruno Fernandes. Manchester United will play from right to left as we look down, attacking the stretch for the end. We know that's not the end. They like to play towards in the first half, so that means that Pauk have won the draw. Can that be a psychological advantage in this 8 o'clock kickoff? There's already been games this evening in the Europa League. As things stand on the live table, Manchester United 21st in the standings, Pauk 31st. You've got to finish high up those standings to progress in the competition. Lovely touch from Diallo, what a little party piece that was to flick the ball infield on the far side. As Manchester United would love to get a, a strong start to this game tonight. Andre Onana, the goalkeeper, Masrawi, Lindelof, Evans and Dello are the back four. Ahmed on the right, Garnacho on the left, Casemiro and Ugarte in the middle. Bruno Fernandes pushing on in support of Rasmus Hoyland in attack. Dominic Kotarski, the Croatian international goalkeeper for Pauk, as Manchester United get a free kick on the right-hand side, just inside their opponent's territory. John Otto at right-back, Kajura, Kohli and Baba Rachman, the defence. Then it's Ozdoyev and Schwab, the captain. Stefan Schwab, former Austrian international, with Zivkovic and Tyson, either side of Madi Kamara. And then up front, Tissoudali, Tarek Tissoudali, Moroccan international, who is the centre-forward for Pauk. Manchester United take the free kick, it was a kick on Diallo, maybe Pauk didn't like that little party piece from him in the early seconds of the game and next time he got the ball he was absolutely clattered. He certainly was, he's looked bright, Ahmed, in these opening exchanges, Manchester United building from the back with a three, Masrari at right back is actually getting himself really high up the pitch, close to Ahmed, so that is clearly a tactic of Ruud van Nistelrooy. Now Garnacho is the one who is kicked to the ground just as he tried to spin away from a challenge. He was caught by Andreas Zivkovic, who you noticed, uh, is he in the warm-up? He went down nursing an injury, Zivkovic, but he was back up at his feet, hobbling for a while, and he has been able to take his place in the starting eleven. but we'll keep an eye on him tonight as Diallo spins in off the wing on the right-hand side. Again, he's tripped just after he released the ball. Referee allows play to continue. Manchester United advance. Garnacho pushes it too far in front of Bruno Fernandes. And that trickles out for a goal kick for Pauk. It is nil-nil in this 8 o'clock kickoff and 5 live in the Europa League. Yeah, bright start for Manchester United. Switching it out to Garnacho on that left-hand side and that sort of third-player run from Bruno Fernandes into a really nice-looking pocket. But Garnacho overhit the pass. Two years ago, Manchester United were beaten here at Old Trafford by Real Sociedad in this competition. That has been Manchester United's only defeat in the last 25 Europa League home games. Can they keep that run going this evening? Ideally, Ruud van Nistelrooy's team need a win. Ugarte's done well to wrestle back possession midway inside his own out. Gives it short to Bruno Fernandes. Back into Casemiro. Casemiro's got three goals in his last two games in all competitions. Diallo involved again on the halfway line, far side of the pitch from us. It's a pleasant evening at Old Trafford. It's very still, there's no wind, no rain, and remarkably for this stage of November, it's not really cold at all either, is it? No, it's perfect night for football. A little bit of mist in the air. I had a really nice feeling to it, walking to the ground of what hopefully for Manchester United fans is a super European night where they get off the mark. Manchester United, who wouldn't be in European competition this season if they hadn't won the FA Cup last season there. League placing wasn't high up, enough up for it. They're still in the bottom half of the Premier League table for now, so staying on in Europe for the foreseeable future could depend on their next few results in this group. They've still got four more games in the Europa League, this new format, four more games to go in what is the, the league phase, they're calling it. Here is Dallo inside the centre circle. 
Playing it left back tonight into the midfield. Bruno Fernandes in front of Hoyland, nearly got into the penalty area. Kajura sliding on the edge of the box, got it back for Pau. And for the first time, the Greek champions put two passes together and then they lose it immediately. Mesraoui in the midfield, on to Bruno Fernandes, back towards Mesraoui again. Omar Colley makes an interception. Now Tyson, the almost 37-year-old Brazilian, former Shakhtar Dines player, has done well to play it up to Tissoudali. He's within 10 yards of the Manchester United penalty area, but covered by Lindelof. Pau called onto the ball, but they're back inside their own half. Is he yeah, Christensen? Very happy, Pauk, just to absorb the enthusiasm out of Manchester United right at the moment. They've managed to regain good possession of the ball. They're just swinging it around the back four, trying to entice Manchester United out of their defensive structure. But good start from both teams. Manchester United looking for their first win in seven European games. And if Ruud van Nistelrooy's team don't win this evening, it'll be Manchester United's worst European run ever. Ball is played forward by Baba Rachman down the left wing. That was a good ball. Tissu Dali out there again. Then it's played towards the edge of the box. Kamara, no one marking him just outside the D. He plays it into the box to Zivkovic. Left footed player playing on the right hand side. Back to the edge of the area. Shot comes in. Repelled away by Casemiro with Onana diving behind him. Casemiro took the sting off the shot. And Johnny Evans was able to clear away. That's Pauk's best attack of the game. Five minutes played, nil-nil on five live. Yeah, it's brilliant from Pauk. They swung the ball from that left-hand side out to this right-hand side. And we did highlight before the game Kamara in that number 10 role, in behind the striker. He just found himself in a really nice space on the edge of the box. The ball's cut back and he just hits it first time well at Casemiro. And that deflected off the inside of Casemiro's leg and it could have gone into the back of the net. Manchester United are lucky. Yeah, earlier on this evening, uh, scores in Europe involving the British clubs. Tottenham have lost away in Galatasaray this evening. Galatasaray 3, Spurs 2. And Rangers have drawn 1-1. They've also been against Greek opposition. Olympiakos 1, uh, Rangers 1 is uh, the latest from there. Chelsea are in action. They've an 8 o'clock kick-off at Stamford Bridge up against Noah. John Southall is there. Oh, it's nil-nil, but Chelsea have just missed a great charge. Jao Felix about four yards out. Not sure how he missed it, but FC now have had two opportunities. Gregorio on the left of the area, 12 yards out, saved by Jorgensen. Gregorio then went down in stages looking for a penalty. No chance of that. Lively start. Chelsea nil, FC Noah nil. Thanks, John. Manchester United nil, Barcelona nil here at Old Trafford. What about Hearts? They're playing Hyden at Tynecastle tonight. Kenny Crawford. Similar to Chelsea corner, six minutes gone. Hearts had a brilliant chance. It's no no between them and Heidenheim. But after three minutes, Lauren Shanklin, the striker, the captain, only one goal this season though. The ball broke from the edge of the box after James Penrice um, dispossessed the defender and Shanklin shot straight at goalkeeper Kevin Muller. He really should have done better. A confident Lauren Shanklin would have. It stays Hearts now, Heidenheim now. Thanks, Kenny. Better Rockman trying to come forward in the left-hand side for Pauk, but good tracking back by Diallo to help out Masraoui. These Manchester United players who have got a watching Ruben Amorim, who will, I'm sure, be glued to this from afar. They've got him to impress tonight. You'd imagine they've got to give this everything as Johnny Evans sweeps across and just uh, manages to slide in in front of Johnny Otto and put the ball out for a throw into Pauk, attacking position down the right-hand side. Away from the continental action this evening, domestically there's one game of the championship tonight. It's at the Hawthorns. It's an 8 o'clock start, West Brom against Burnley. How's that one begun? Here's Tom Gale. Where it's also goalless, Connor, the home side struggling for goals at the Hawthorns. They've had the game's first attempt, crossed to the back post. John Swift on the volley, high into the Smethwick end. West Brom nil, Burnley nil. Thanks very much, uh, Thomas. Kamara plays a 1-2 with Zivkovic. Pauk seeing plenty of possession now. Manchester United dominated the opening 3-4 minutes, but the Greek champions growing into the game, growing in stature and confidence. It's still very much the early stages, but they're looking a bit more relaxed now. As Omar Colley, who is a uh, Gambian international, turns and rolls the ball back to the goalkeeper Kotoski, Dominic Kotoski. Made his international debut for... Croatia earlier on this year the referee has held up play inside the centre circle and it's going to be a free kick to Manchester United and Casemiro standing right on the centre spot referee this evening from Romania Radu Petrescu the POW coach Radzvan Lucescu is also from Romania we heard about him ahead of kickoff. his dad a very famous coach of the past who won this competition or its predecessor at least the old Europa, uh, sorry, UEFA Cup in the past. Uh, here's Casemiro, good direct ball into the penalty area, just too high for Rasmus Hoyland. Pauk are able to clear it away. 
First time that Manchester United played a de dangerous ball into the penalty area tonight. Let's see what Ugarte can do here. Rolls it to his left hand side to Dello, up to the edge of the penalty area. Garnacho stepping over in the left wing, rolls it back to Dello once again. Pauk are quick to drop deep here. All 11 players back within 10 yards of their own penalty area. You can hear the whistles and jeers from their supporters whenever Manchester United get a sustained spell of possession here. And although heavily outnumbered, the, there's no doubt easy the Pauk fans are just as loud as the Manchester United support here. They certainly are. This is Garnacho. Left hand side, back into Dello, back into Johnny Evans tonight. And then he looks to spray it out expansively towards Masrawi, takes it down on his chest, level with the edge of the penalty area that Manchester United attack on the right hand side. Diallo gets the touch back to Lindelof. Good possession here for Manchester United, but can they pick the incisive pass? Manchester United nil. Pauk nil, 5 live for the BBC in the Europa League. Masrawi, that's a good turn on the edge of the box. Gives it to the feet of Bruno Fernandes. Now to Dallo in the penalty area. Quick dancing feet, tried to give it to Masrawi. Too tight, too congested though. And Pauk aren't able to fully clear it away. Casemiro crosses low. Masrawi tries to help it on. Zivkovic is back there. And it is with some relief that Pauk do fully clear it away this time. Yeah, it's beautiful, intricate play from Manchester United. Fernandes, Ahmed, Masrawi all combining on that right-hand side of Pauk's penalty area, who are really compact. It's really difficult to find those passes. But Manchester United have been really patient. Ahmed's looked really sharp in this opening ten minutes. Tonight, the first ever meeting of Manchester United and Pauk Salonika. United, who do have a very good record against Greek sides over the years. They've got 100% home record in matches against Greek opposition. In fact, uh, look over six home games that Manchester United have played against clubs from Greece in the past. Forget about losing a game, they've only conceded one goal in total across those six matches. But there's optimism from the travelling fans. And with 11 minutes played, it's been pretty even so far in the early stages. Ruud van Nistelrooy naming a strong team tonight, hoping to get a win in this year's first European game in charge of Manchester United. Second last game that he will be in the dugout, he's got the... League match of the weekend, and then it'll be the arrival of Ruben Amorim. This is Lindelof to Masrawi, midway inside Manchester United territory. There was a high-risk pass by Masrawi. He nearly gave it away there, but he did pick out Dallo. Dallo, who's got Ahmad, all the tricks tonight. He's full of twists and turns. Uh, Diogo Dallo's done one on the edge of the penalty area here. Tries to get the ball away from Kijora. Just can't do it as the Polish international nudges it clear. Pauk have it up on the halfway line with Zivkovic. And then he turns under pressure from Ugarte, and Pauk must retreat again back through Johnny Otto and all the way back to the goalkeeper again. Is he? Yeah, Dallo finding himself really advanced in that moment. And Manchester United are building with a back three with Lindelof, Evans, and Dallo as sort of the three, and Masrawi's tucked up high on that right hand side. But Dallo does have freedom to go, and when I noticed he went then, Ugarte was quick to fill in for him, which I think is really good because he needs to put out those fires on the transition. Pauk look to go long, it's a long searching pass towards Zivkovic. Diogo Dallas back there, that's an uncertain header. Zivkovic for the chance, he shoots and he had plenty of bend and whip in it, but it's well wide in the end. And had he got his angle right, there was a lovely curl on that shot, but it just set off too far wide of the tar target to try and get back in towards the net. Absolutely, it was a, a really nice sort of cut inside from Zivkovic on this right-hand side, onto his favoured left foot, and he's looked to wrap it away from the goal to come back in. We would have had a perfect angle of that, Connor. Yes, it's we just were wide. right behind it. That's the best chance of the game here. Let's go quickly to Chelsea, John Southall. Where Chelsea have the lead, Chelsea won FC no, nil. came from a corner on the right-hand side from Fernandes, and there was Tosin Adraboya with his first goal for the club, guiding a header into the bottom left-hand corner. Chelsea won no, a nil. Casemiro almost gives away possession of the midfield, but Masrawi wins it back quickly for Manchester United. Ahmad does a little back heel to himself to pirouette around and find a bit of space. He's looked really good, Ahmad, tonight. Masrawi back out to the right wing where Casemiro has remained. First time delivery. Gone out to the back post. What a block for the defender. That is brilliant defending Johnny Otto because Garnacho's header, I'm sure, was going towards the target. A whipped cross from Casemiro, and we've had two really good chances at both ends. Manchester United nil, Pauk nil. Oh, that ball from Casemiro is absolutely exquisite. He's whipped in with pace right to the back post area. Garnacho looks to head it. He does really well, actually. He looks to head it back across goal. I think there was appeals for handball. We're just watching a replay, but Garnacho unmarked at the back post. 
He does so well to get on the end of that. Garnacho, who is Manchester United's top scorer across all competitions this season. We'll go back to Chelsea in a moment, but here's the Manchester United corner, played in by Bruno Fernandes. Dello trying a backward header. It'll go out for corner number two, back to Stamford Bridge, back to John Southall. Chelsea 2, FC Noah 0, mistake from Noah, they gave the ball away to Mark Gehu on the edge of the penalty area, he slotted it in, his first goal for the club, it's a popular one, Chelsea 2, FC Noah 0. I'm surprised, Sean, you didn't say the goals are going to go in two by two tonight. There'll be we've enough for that. that one. <laughs> Does that mean, Doug? We, we've ticked <laughs> that box. Right, OK. Corner to Manchester United, which Bruno Fernandes will take. Right footed, same low delivery. This time headed out by a defender. It'll be corner number three. In, in fact, this one won't be a corner. This has got out on the throw-in side of the corner flag. So a throw into Manchester United. Two deliveries there below the regular standard you'd expect from a set piece from Bruno Fernandes. Yeah, I think he's trying to actually whip it into that near post area. It's clearly something Manchester United have worked on or targeted as an area where Pauk may have a weakness defending that front post space. But the captain... Throw in, take it to Bruno Fernandes. Back across the face of goal and Colley has to hack it away for another throw-in. Sorry, is yeah, Fernandez just with two poorly executed deliveries, but United on top here. Exactly quarter of an hour played in the Europa League. Manchester United nil, Pauk Salonika nil. Johnny Evans from inside Pauk territory turns and rolls it back to Andre Anana wearing all purple. He's up at the halfway line. His clearance towards the edge of the box is flicked on by Dallow. Garnacho gets it down on the deck. Right foot across, too high for Hoyland again. And that bounces away. Rasmus Hoyland in his Manchester United career has had to be so patient as he waits for good quality service. Well, there has been two already from Casemiro. First time deliveries. He's just got himself into good areas where he's stepped onto the ball and he's just whipped it in first time with pace. Hoyland just lurking in that six yard area, waiting for his goal. Rasmus Hoyland who scored against Porto in this competition in October. One of just two goals he scored this season, the other one in the Premier League against Brentford. That was two league matches ago. Rasmus Hoyland who did play against Pauk in this competition with his old club Copenhagen in the past and tonight up against them again in the colours of Manchester United. Manchester United playing right to left as we look down. The red shirts, white shorts, black socks. Pauk in sort of Newcastle United colours, black and white. Ahmad's done really well here against Baba Rackman to the byline, into the penalty area. Defenders going to be really careful of the box. That was a rather rash challenge on the byline, but inside the penalty area. Manchester United fans of the Stretford Edge screaming for a penalty. Ahmad is still down. The referee's on field decision is that it's going to be a corner. But Baba Rackman was right on the knife edge there as to whether he's going to give away a penalty. Yeah, it's, I, I think that's a penalty. I'm just watching the, the replay for the third time and there's real contact on Ahmad. He does really well to get to the byline, dribbles into the box. Any sort of contact on him in that moment is a penalty and that could have gone either way, but they've got a corner. Yeah, the contact, the main force of it is hip on hip, which is very forceful and does force Ahmad to fall over. Uh, the fact that it's the hip, could that get him out of jail here? Baba Rachman, who as well as played for Chelsea, has played with Reading in more recent times. The VAR has had a look at it. They are satisfied with the on-field decision. They say no penalty. I think if it had been boot on boot to shit on shit, it might have been a different story. Um, Romanian on-field official tonight, but the video assistant referee and his partner are from Italy. It's Daniele Kifi who's looking at the replays from afar on this one. But, you know, if, if this remains a tight game, that'll be a talking point because Rachman... I mean, there's no doubt Ahmad would not have fallen over if the defender didn't collide into him, and he's inside the penalty area. Corner's been taken. Garnacho into the penalty area. Turns, shoots, takes a deflection corner again. This is a good spell for Ruud van Nistelrooy's team. Yeah, Garnacho working the short corner there with, with Bruno Fernandes. He just tucks inside, finds himself in a pocket on the edge of the box in a shooting position. He unleashes one on the centre-back collie with the deflection over for another corner. Two Manchester United players standing over it, Ahmad and Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes rolls it short to Diogo Dallo, gets it back again. It's not worked out very well for Manchester United. From the corner, they've had to retreat all the way back to the halfway line. Ugarte will try and re-summons a bit of momentum. That's a good ball. Out to Ahmad on the right-hand side. Left foot into the Rasmus Haaland! Header on target, saved by the keeper. He had defenders in front and behind him. 
and he didn't quite get the propulsion on that. He was a cushioned header. It's saved by Katarski, but Hoyland, that's his first chance. Ahmed again, an excellent cross in onto his left foot. He just shifts the ball with his first touch and he just delivers an exquisite ball in. And that is why you deliver first time. You've got Hoyland in the box waiting to attack it. It's been a very busy start to the game here at Old Trafford, but not as busy as Stamford Bridge. Chelsea Noah, John Southall. Yeah, you see it's the Armenians now. Chelsea 3, FC Noah 0. Carbon copy of the first goal. Corner on the right hand side. This time Axel de Sassi, the player, to head it in. 18 minutes played. Chelsea lead by three goals to nil. Thanks very much, uh, John. Manchester United nil, Barcelona nil here at Old Trafford and five live. 20 minutes played. Pauku do have a very familiar Premier League name in their squad these days, but not involved tonight. Dayan Lovren, he joined Pauku in September. Former Southampton and Liverpool player, of course, Premier League winner with Liverpool in 2020. Uh, was part of their Champions League success too in, in 2019 but he signed for Pauk after the deadline here's Ahmad he takes another tumble in the penalty area after releasing a pass to Mazraoui that one didn't look quite so clear-cut and referee is going to give a free kick for a foul on one of the Pauk defenders it's going to be a free kick to the Greek champions and a chance for them to clear away the pressure I tell you what Bruno Fernandes has been so sharp in that 10 role in behind Rasmus Hoyland, he's been picking up some really intelligent positions and feeding Ahmed with the first time pass. So often we see midfielders holding onto the ball for too long and it disrupts the 1v1 opportunity for the wingers. But Bruno Fernandes has been feeding Ahmed exactly the right time and that is why he's had such a good start to this game. Magomed Ozdoyev is the player who was slow to get back to his feet there, Russian international turned uh, 32 on Tuesday here's uh, a chance as Pauk trying to play it from the left wing into the penalty area but Dallow has got it under control despite the attentions of Zivkovic he cuts back at himself clears it up towards Bruno Fernandes then Baba Rachman comes in and gets there ahead of Diallo but a very poor ball gives possession back to Manchester United and Ugarte immediately relieves Garnacho bearing down on the Pauk penalty area Dallow's outside him good defending again Johnny Otto you can see that Premier League quality whenever Manchester United have attacked down that side the former Wolverhampton Wanderers player has kept his cool yeah Johnny Otto did really well there the Pauk fullback the right back Dallo Garnacho looking to combine on the transition down that left hand side and that for the second time Garnacho has actually just passed the ball out of play with the wrong execution but the fans are getting off their feet here off their seat sorry I think it's worth a comment that Diogo Dallo how hard he works because he won possession edge of his own six yard box there from the Pauk throw in set that counter-attack in motion he's the one getting on the end of the Garnacho pass to the byline down the other end for a player who's played I think every minute of every game in every competition this season with no doubt he's leading forward there trying to get his breath back that is that is the commitment that Manchester United probably want to see a bit more of from their players absolutely that's the level that they need week in week out whoever is playing in that first 11 in a Manchester United shirt Dallo certainly does set the standards at times but there are other times when fans might get a little bit frustrated with him. The chance against West Ham in particular. He got himself yeah. into a fantastic area. Didn't execute. Those are the big moments. That was the game that cost Eric Ten Hag his job ultimately. He's trying to come forward here. Tissu Dali. He tries to run through a congested Manchester United midfield. But good work from Casemiro to intercept. And uh, John Southall is in the goals tonight at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea against Noah. It's getting silly, Connor. Chelsea 4, FC Noah nil. Again, non-existent defending. Noah gave the ball away. This time, Jao Felix was the one who capitalised and he stroked it in. Chelsea 4, FC Noah nil. And we'll all start looking up the, the record books to see what Chelsea's uh, biggest ever European win is. But 4 nil up after what quarter of the game played. That could be a long night for the visitors there, Dello on the attack for Manchester United, Ugarte's first touch just a little heavy, it was a difficult one to receive, he was sprinting at full stretch and it didn't quite come into his stride, he nudged it too far forward, now the ball is cleared away, let's get an update from Hearts against Heidenheim at Tynecastle. here's Kenny Crawford. Yeah, 23 minutes gone in Edinburgh, corner still Hearts, now Heidenheim, now but Hearts right in this, right in the Germans' faces and they've had the best of the chances so far, Lawrence Shanklin with that golden opportunity after three minutes which was saved, he had another one from a tight angle also saved and then Frankie Kent former Colchester and Peterborough defender had a diving header from Blair Spittle's corner which was just wide of the post Hearts nil Heidenheim nil
Pauk up on the attack with Zivkovic down the right hand side stepping into the penalty area Casemiro worked hard to get back and help out Dallo and that commitment is in evidence from a Manchester United team who are in top of this game in the Europa League tonight here they come over the halfway line Bruno Fernandes gives it to Ahmad running at Baba Rackman who's got twisted blood already in this game Ahmad has turned and shaken him so often on that particular occasion Ahmad's return pass to Bruno Fernandes wasn't good enough and away it goes and that will be a goal kick let's check in in the championship West Brom against Burnley Tom Gale West Brom nil Burnley nil Connor Scott Parker's side starting to dominate though corner swung in by Sarmiento the goalkeeper came out but it was visiting striker Zion Fleming who got the header it hit Alex Palmer flush in the face he didn't know anything about it West Brom nil Burnley nil West Brom have drawn their last five games in a row right 24 almost 25 minutes in at Old Trafford what have you made easy of this Ruud van Nistelrooy team performance so far tonight? Nil-nil Manchester United against Pau. I do think they look really good at times, Manchester United. I've been impressed in particular with Agate, who's coming in and doing exactly what we thought he was going to do, which is basically be a fire extinguisher in the middle of the park. He's made some excellent forward runs, but I think his reading of the game has been excellent. Brave from Lindelof, who was caught in the head there with the high boots from Stefan Schwab. And uh, in fact, he then lost his boot as well. There's great commitment from Lindov. He's running over from the right hand side of defence into the centre circle. He knew it was 50 50 at best. It was only 51 49 in favour of the opponent, but he stretched out his leg. He got his head to it, knew he was going to receive the blow to the head. But Manchester United gets the free kick. Casemiro is standing over it inside the centre circle. He takes it short to Victor Lindelof. Here is Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans has only scored one Europa League goal in his career. It came for Leicester. It came against Napoli three or four years ago. Evans, who's probably played a little bit more this season than he thought he would have done. He's had five Premier League appearances. He's back involved in cup competition tonight. You mentioned before kickoff. Is he how many central defenders there are at Manchester United? And Harry Maguire, we know, is unavailable at the moment. They've got Lenny Yoro, who's yet to play it a competitive game there's no shortage of central defenders and yet Johnny Evans has still had plenty of game time massive respect you know he's clearly a top professional does the job I don't think he's the the long-term solution at centre-back but I think his leadership and professionalism will have definitely helped keep the dressing room buoyant in a very turbulent time Orara who was almost over the halfway line plays a pass out to the left wing to Dallo Back in field to Ugarte, step over from Casemiro, allows it to run for Bruno Fernandes, back to Casemiro, Johnny Otto's tackle in the penalty area, they're up in arms again in the straight for them looking for a penalty, but I think that was a good tackle, lovely move, the, the telepathy there between Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes almost produced the opening goal. Yeah, it was absolutely exquisite from, from those two players, Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes, Casemiro does the dummy, lets the ball run, it falls, I think it was Ozdev, in the centre of the midfield, he makes the third man run, Casemiro, and Bruno Fernandes threads the ball through the eye of a needle. It's definitely not a penalty. I think the fans wanted it, but there was excellent defending there from, from Pauk. Yeah, the Italian video assistant referee wasted no time in uh, confirming his agreement with the on-field decision. No penalty there. So Manchester United with the best of the chances here so far. Zivkovic, who put a powerful effort away off target, is about as close as Pauk have come. But Ruud van Nistelrooy's team still awaiting a break in the deadlock here at Old Trafford. They scored five against Leicester. They had the Bruno Fernandes penalty at the weekend against Chelsea. That remarkably into November was the first time in the Premier League this season that Bruno Fernandes had found the back of the net. Here comes Kamara for Pau. Good early ball towards the edge of the D. First touch needed to be perfect by Tissudali. And the challenge came thundering into him by Johnny Evans. And the referee says it's a fair challenge and play on. The Pauk fans were jeering and whistling. They thought that might have been a free kick. Pauk supporters housed away to our right-hand side, given a larger-than-usual allocation of seats here. And they're at the end that their team is attacking in the first half. This is Tyson. Brazilian, eight caps over the years. Scored a goal against Manchester United back in his Shakhtar days in the Champions League. That was a long time ago. That was over a decade ago when Tyson was playing with Shakhtar Donetsk Ugarte gets it wrestled away from him by Schwab and here is Zivkovic who I still think is the real danger man 
for Pauk. Here he is cutting in, shooting with power and diving to his right hand side. Onana makes the save. There was fizz in that, there was movement, the sort of knuckleball approach by Zivkovic, but Onana greeted it to his gloves. As you say, Connor, there was a real fizz to that strike from Zivkovic. Cuts inside, he has far too much space to get the shot off. And instead of going, I like his earlier effort where he's looked to whip it into that far corner, he's gone for the power like an arrow. But it didn't trouble Anana. Uh, latest episode of the Euro Leagues podcast is out at 10 p.m. this evening. Here come Manchester United attacking down the right wing again. Ahmad Diallo loves to cut in on his left boot. Papa Rackman tries to usher him away backwards, and Manchester United do have it with Casemiro, who's positioned himself in between the two central defenders. Johnny Evans low to the left wing. Bruno Fernandes just picking up positions all over the park tonight, trying to shrug off any would-be man marker. Kamara's done well here to get it back for Pauk, and he sets off on a slaloming run. That's great to watch as he just veered away from two opponents and plays a pass in front of Tyson. Tyson now five yards outside the Manchester United penalty area. Lindelof, the nearest defender to him. Back to Baba Rachman, who's up from left back, and Manchester United did well to get bodies back behind the ball, which is not something we always give them much credit for, but they're doing well in that regard tonight. Now, chance of a counter-attack. Here is Rasmus Hoyland, halfway line. Slow, though, in delivering the pass, and he's allowed Pau get some defenders back. Let's see if Bruno Fernandes can keep the momentum up. Garnacho outside him, left foot of ball in low! Amad is arriving, and he just couldn't add the final piece to the jigsaw. What a great build-up that was. Out it goes for a Manchester United corner. Manchester United nil, Pout nil at Old Trafford. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic ball across from Garnacho. He just whips it into a space where I like to call the corridor of uncertainty in between the centre-backs and the goalkeeper with pace. And it's Ahmad locking up at the back post to tap it in, but he just couldn't quite get there. Corner to be taken by Bruno Fernandes. Now, he's played a lot of these short or low tonight. What's he got to do here from the right-hand side in front of an expectant Stretford end? The cross comes in, conventional delivery, lead by Casemiro, he's claiming it came off a defender, the Romanian referee isn't buying that, and that will be a goal kick to Pauk, away to our left-hand side. So with half an hour played, Manchester United have had five corners now, Pauk haven't had any yet, and that sort of sums up the dominance of Ruud van Nistelrooy's team so far. Izzy Christensen. Yeah, they've certainly dominated Manchester United, they've had a lot of the ball, they've kind of hit Pauk on the transitions and they've attacked with real pace and a threat in Garnacho and Ahmed in particular on either flank, but they've just failed to find that cutting edge in the final piece where the goal needs to be scored. The closing months of Eric Ten Hag's time in charge here, Manchester United sort of reached that stage where it felt they were only ever one bad defeat away from a crisis, and Ruben Amorim would love to come into a team that had put together a little unbeaten run. It was... Uh, Whenever Leicester draw against Chelsea, if they can make it three games unbeaten tonight, then go into the Premier League game at the weekend when it's Leicester again. Leicester will come here in the Premier League, but I think if they, they can have just that little, you know, suit of armour, Manchester United of a, of a four-game run unbeaten when Amorim arrives, that wouldn't do him any harm at all. Absolutely not, and also the players, the confidence and the state of where they're at at the moment. They need to start putting together a run that gets them competitive again, especially in this competition, because this might be the one where you look at and go, this is the likelihood of finding Champions League football again. Ducate goes long, Johnny Otto was covering Garnacho, continues to do a good job on him. Zivkovic back helping out the defence, tries to dribble his way into the opponent's half, and he pretty much succeeds, that's very good. Schwab keeps it moving, here is Maddy Kamara, and over to the left wing, to Baba Rachman, but this is where the momentum kind of slows down a bit. They, they get up ahead of steam, but then very quickly they resolve to a safe pass or a backward pass. And Pauk at the moment is struggling to get in behind the Manchester United defence, who, let's face it, looking back over recent months, have been vulnerable when put under pressure, but Pauk aren't applying that pressure. Here comes Baba Rachman down the left hand side in full flow, chest pumped up, tried to play it in towards Schwab, his captain. Good interception, Ugarte. That's what he's in the team to do, Ugarte. His forward play doesn't dazzle quite as much, but it's those interceptions on the edge of his own box. That's the bread and butter for him. Here comes Bruno Fernandes. Tried to return the ball to Ahmad. Level with the edge of the penalty area that Manchester United attack down the right-hand side. Ahmad gives it back to Bruno Fernandes. Pauk have got lots of players back behind the ball. Here's Ugarte. 
Five yards outside the penalty area. Quickly helps it on to Dallo. Quickly to the left wing to Alejandro Garnacho. Two defenders standing up in front of him. Casemiro has joined Hoyland in the penalty area. Dallo tries to chip it towards Bruno Fernandes. That was a tricky one to execute. Needed to be just perfect and it wasn't. And Pauk are able to clear the ball away. Manchester United nil, Pauk nil. Yeah, they swung the ball from, from right to left really well there. Manchester United just sort of teasing Pauk out in and around the 18-yard box, seeing if they bite and the gaps open. But it was just a really poorly executed... It wasn't even a cross from Dallo. He looked to dink it into the run of Garnacho, I think it was. Just again, fi find, not finding that solution to break Pauk's resilient defence so far. And that's from Luchescu, the Pauk coach, goalkeeper in his playing days. He has been successful, though, two league titles with Pauk. In the middle, he went off for a spell in Saudi, where he won the Saudi League, the King's Cup, and the Asian Champions League with Al Hilal. Um, tonight is his 100th game as a coach in UEFA. European competition so he's got plenty of experience he's got a winning track record he would love he would see it as a real scalp if his team could beat Manchester United here tonight at Old Trafford Ruud van Nistelrooy who's held on the edge of the technical area smart tight-fitting coat arms folded across his chest he's got Darren Fletcher in the technical area who's having a word with him a few minutes ago and they have sent a couple of the substitutes to go for a warm-up De Ligt is one of them and Xerxes is the other I imagine that is just to, to keep the blood pumping rather than any imminent change, but we'll, we'll monitor the progress on that. This is Schwab for Pauk. Nil nil away at Manchester United tonight. Zivkovic, halfway line on the right hand side. The yellow in his boots rolls it in field. Kamara, safe pass again. As Pauk hold on to possession. As Doyev to Omar Kholi. Will the Greek champions be brave enough to try? A sort of Hollywood pass that would be needed to, to break the deadlock and maybe give them the lead ahead of half time. Safe again from Kejura. And then Johnny Otto goes back to the goalkeeper. I mean, I guess that nil nil will probably be a good score for Pauk tonight. They are being quite conservative at the moment, is it? They are, they really are, and I think they'll be happy with it. The, the coach will be happy with it. They are, I think they're waiting for the 100% pass where they're 100% sure that it's going to be key to get them through on goal, but they're just waiting and waiting. and I think they've been quite intelligent, if I'm honest, because they're keeping the ball, not giving it away so easily, because they're spending a lot of time defending Pauk. They're just being very protective of the ball when they win it back. Have you found that you know, in your play career, is if you've got a change of head coach, you know someone new is coming in, is it almost a relief at times? Can the players see there's a weight off their shoulders? You know, the, 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 the coach who leaves is kind of the patsy, if you like. Yeah, take all the bad stuff within. Does, does it feel that way or, or is there a different pressure? It's, it's different. I, I, I think the players here for Manchester United, I think they're auditioning for, for their next steps. Because Bruno Fernandes, this is a good break from the halfway line. Ahmad into the penalty area, just seemed to get it stuck between his feet a little bit. There wasn't a natural flow to the way he received the ball there, and Pauk are able to clear it away. Yeah, I think they've they've demonstrated, you know, a real lift in performances since the departure of Eric Ten Hag. Let's not forget he won two trophies here at Manchester United, but it's that consistency that this club needs, the consistency of the winning habits. And they've certainly found that under Van Nistelrooy in this short period. But moving forward, I think there'll be a few players who will profit from the new arrival and some that won't. And that's normal in football. But it's a case of sustaining that level of performance where you can compete. Let's be honest, this club's all about winning. Well, let's go for an update back to, to Tyne Castle, the latest uh, from Hearts game this evening against Heidenheim here's Kenny Crawford oh it's still no no corner between Hearts and Heidenheim but Jan Dander former Swansea midfielder just did a shot which stung the palms of Kevin Muller in the Heidenheim goal Hearts still really impressive how they're going about this tie um, James Penrice had a couple of chances a minute ago and then Blair Spittle a midfielder on bang on form at the moment had a shot deflected wide from the edge of the box Hearts nil Heidenheim nil and back to the championship, back to the Hawthorns. West Brom against Burnley tonight, here's Tom Gale. Goal is here, Connor, but the visitors should be in front. Misplaced West Brom pass, sent in Sarmiento, one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of time, maybe too much, and it was Alex Palmer who saved with his feet. It's West Brom nil, Burnley nil. Burnley starting to the evening in fourth place. Shot from distance has to be tipped away by Onana, and that was a shot that, that came in, almost taken the Cameroonian international goalkeeper by surprise. It was a header from Johnny Evans, it came to Kamara at the edge of the box and he did well to get it on target. 
out for the corner. That is definitely the closest Pauk have been. And look at their fans, Izzy. They're pouncing as if they've just won the World Cup or something. <laughs> they've just won a corner. Well, they've responded really well. This little touch from Kamara and the finish, the snapshot finish. There must have been a fraction of a second in between his touch and the shot. And Anana was equal to it. Very good technique from Kamara there. Here comes the corner, played in by Johnny. Attempt of a diving header. Kamara tries to shoot. Bruno Fernandes gets his body in the way, though. And the Manchester United captain is able to clear it away. And I think Pout needed that. Just a spell of attack themselves because they've been absorbing a lot of pressure at the back. Yeah, the fans are certainly responding from that corner and that effort from Kamara, which actually looking at the replay, it's probably rising just over the bar, but Anana had to be sure to get a hand to it tip it over but Powell could be so happy with the way that they've handled this first half they have limited Manchester United and they're just in these moments right now they're just you can feel it in the atmosphere they're just bringing the enthusiasm away from Manchester United by just sucking them out of their defensive structure Maddy Kamara who has scored three goals in all competitions this season now, two years ago he played for Roma under Jose Mourinho uh, he's operating in that sort of central attacking midfield role behind Tissudali, who's the main striker, who's a bit like Rasmus Hall until I'd having to be patient, waiting for a chance to come his way. Lindelof makes an interception for Manchester United, tries to play it towards Ahmad, but too close to Omar Colley. Colley is able to clear the ball away, and what has been a busy first half at Stamford Bridge has just got even busier. Back to John Southall. It is Chelsea have got their fifth. It was coming. Chelsea five, FC no nil. Brilliant goal by Mikhail Mudrik just on the edge of the penalty area. Curled it into the top right-hand corner. Chelsea five, FC no nil. Chelsea's record, Connor, 13 nil. Uh, OK, well, right. <laughs> Maybe a bit of a way to go before they start to threaten that, but... Around about five minutes to play in the first half at Stamford Bridge and 5-0 already to Enzo Moresca's team. Here's Ahmad on the attack for Manchester United. Up against Baba Rachman, pulls it back to the edge of the penalty area, cleverly left by Bruno Fernandes, stabbed into the box by Casemiro, but cut out by Kajora in front of Rasmus Hoyland. Pauk managed to get it away again, but there is there's a, there's a trickery to Manchester United's attack here. They are thinking outside the box. They are, they're being inventive. They certainly are. There's been some really nice moments in that final third for Manchester United. And that one became apparent from Andre Anana, who actually pinged the ball with his left foot out to Ahmed. It must have been about 80-yard pass right to his right foot. It was absolutely wonderful. But for all their eye-catching display in this first half, Manchester United have not been able to take the lead in a competition in which they have yet to win a game. This is United's fourth Europa League game of the campaign three draws out of three so far here's to Sudali pursued by Lindelof he's played a somewhat high risk back pass which Hoyland might have intercepted but goalkeeper Kutowski got there first and was able to clear it away nil nil here at Old Trafford Spurs beaten 3-2 at Galatasaray tonight and Rangers with a 1-1 draw away at Olympiacos here's Kajura to Omar Colley the other Pauk central defender, Hoyland comes to put pressure on him so he turns and rolls it back to Dominic Kutowski once again well, there's been a call you'll never guess where it's been, John that's what the score is, Chelsea 6, <laughs> Noah 0 Joe Felix again with the goal took a big deflection but I think he'll be given to him seven more to go Connor Chelsea yes, 6, we, we want 13 no. tonight, we want to break records at 5 live this evening, thanks John, here come Manchester United Bruno Fernandes just too high for Casemiro, good run from the Brazilian into the penalty area, I think that's been the story of the first half is he, Manchester United promising build-ups fractionally out with their final pass yeah that's exactly right Connor just that final moment there's been some brilliant crosses in first time from Casemiro and Fernandes Ahmed's looked lively but like you say just failed to find that final piece which is sticking the ball in the back of the net two and a half minutes to go to the break at Old Trafford we'll be back with uh, Ellie and Rene Mullenstein in the uh, studio at half time first half that has gone by quickly there's not been any real delays Johnny Evans with possession one of three changes in Ruud van Nistelrooy's team tonight. Van Nistelrooy, who won the league with PSV in that one full season in charge. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, came second in the league. That, that's, he won the cup, wasn't it, that he did that, that one full season in charge. And just of the experience of being a head coach, being assistant for the Dutch national team.
Bobber Rachman controls the ball. Chelsea, who signed him, he, he played a lot of one season. I think he played about 30 games the first season. Never saw him again out on loan, as so many Chelsea players do. And ultimately, leaving the club was never to play for Chelsea again, Baba Rachman. Now, that's a nice little bit of play. Miles Doyev in the midfield and trying to accelerate forward. Tyson in off the left wing to a more central position. Zivkovic, good idea to try and pull it back to Kamara, but he played it a bit too forcefully in front of him. Kamara's been able to hold on to the ball, but he's got to go wide to do it. Babarakman comes to join the attack. Oh, he's gone through Ugarte. That was weak defending. Garnacho clears away. Ugarte, lucky boy. Yeah, that's brilliant bit of play from Pauk. The overlapping fullback manages to get the cross in. Any contact in and around that area on Baba would have been a penalty. And it was Garnacho doing his defensive duties, mopping up inside his own 18-yard box in a really good position, reading the play well. Manchester United are on the back foot here. Nil-nil. Pauk have only been involved in one scoreless draw this season in all competitions. They were nil-nil against Panathinaikos in the Greek League. Dello and Evans between them get it back on the edge of the Manchester United penalty area. Now, can Van Nistelrooy's team launch a counter-attack? That's a weak pass from Garnacho. Bruno Fernandes wanted that played earlier and firmer, and he might have been away, but Garnacho couldn't dig it out. Throw in to Manchester United. Bruno Fernandes continuing the remonstrations with Garnacho there. Here is Lindelof, one minute to be added on for stoppages ahead of the break at Old Trafford. Evans to the right wing to Ahmed Diallo. This time Babarakman stepping away off him. He's been good tonight. Dello, I think he's you know proved his worth in the team ahead of Marcus Rashford this evening. But can Manchester United get a goal? Garacho on the left wing. Zivkovic back to help out Johnny Otto. Casemiro tries to return it to Garnacho, it's intercepted by a defender and out it goes for a, a Manchester United throw. 30 seconds or so remaining in this first half. And that clapping noise you can hear in the background coming from the Pauk fans. They've been very well orchestrated and regimented, they're like a, an in unison different chants and claps and movements that they make. Bruno Fernandes, can Pauk hold on to the break at nil-nil? Spreads it out to the right wing. Ahmed Diallo, good control down off his shin. Veers in field. Bruno Fernandes too high with the lofted return. But it comes back to Bruno Fernandes. Two defenders in front of him. Gives it to Masrawi. Back to Bruno Fernandes. Third time involved in the move. Dallo leaves it. Bad decision. He rolled it to the foot of Dallo in his shooting position. Dallo opened his legs. He thought there was a teammate behind him. There was no one behind him. No shot in the end. And that was the final action of the first half. A first half in which Ruud van Nistelrooy's Manchester United had all the possession, all the territory. They had the best of the chances, but the teams go in all square at half time. Is he Christensen? Yeah, I think Dallo there with that final chance of this first half. I think he lets the ball run through his legs because he thinks the pass from Bruno Fernandes isn't for him, but I think it was. And he just needed to wrap his right foot around it and he would have had a fantastic effort on goal. But that was beautiful play again on that right hand side for Manchester United. But again, the story of the first half failing to find that final little piece of getting the ball in the back of the net. Manchester United haven't scored many first half goals this season. I guess if we're looking for positives, most of them come in the second half. So they will hope to be able to push on and to get a goal that would be worthy of the attacking play that they've enjoyed in this first half. It's rather quiet here at Old Trafford at the break. Can Ruud van Nistelrooy's team come out and inspire Old Trafford in the second half? For now, it's Manchester United nil, Pauk Salonika nil. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Izzy. With me in the studio, the former Manchester United assistant manager, René Moulenstein. We heard Ruud van Nistelrooy say, didn't we, before kick-off, that they, uh, he's very happy with the chances they're creating... They're just not getting on the end of them. Yeah, but I have to say in the first half, or like uh, Conor and Izzy was saying, that uh, they have been on top, but they've been having some some really good moments getting into the box. Although I do think there is a lack of quality there, a few really poor decisions, and that's let them down so far. So they have to step that uh, they have to step that up in the second half. The best chance, actually, probably on target came from for Park. Yes, and, and uh, if you look at Park, you, you know, it's it's an experienced team. There's a lot of older players in there and uh, 
<clears throat> sometimes with these teams, they sort of start to fade away in the second half of the lack of energy. If if Manchester United want to capitalise on that, they need to be a little bit more on the front foot and don't give Park, Park the sort of chance, like Izzy says as well. When they've got the ball, they just wait for United, they don't rush anything, they wait for that one particular chance and it nearly fell for them. Uh, any changes that you'd be making at half-time, do you think? I don't think Root would make any changes now. Um, there's no reason to uh, in that respect, uh, but he's got plenty of players to come on. You know, if he really wants to put the pressure on for the, let's say, still nil nil with half an hour to go, he has to go for the win. So, uh, fourth game in the Europa League this season for Manchester United. They uh, haven't actually won a, a game in Europe for 380 days now. So, uh, change obviously required in the second half to try and get that first win on the board. Let's catch up with some of the other games happening uh, this evening. John Southall, first of all, at Stamford Bridge, where I think you could say, John, that uh, Noah are on the wrong end of a flood. <laughs> they are. They are. I think we can safely say this one's over. Chelsea 6, Noah nil at half time. Actually, Noah started quite well in the opening 10 minutes. Gregorio is denied by Jorgensen. He will rue that because 11 minutes later they were 4 0 down. The first, Fernandez corner. Good movement from Tosin Adarabayu headed in his first goal for the club. The second, Silva gave the ball away to Mark Guillou. He dispatched it, also his first goal for the club. The third, I refer you back to the first, this time Dasassi scoring from the corner. The fourth, I refer you back to the second, Silva again gave it away, this time to Jao Felix. That was in 21 minutes, the first four goals. We had a little break then. Six minutes before half-time, the fifth flowing Chelsea move ended with Mikhailo Mudrik on the edge of the D, scoring into the top right-hand corner. Jao Felix added the sixth deflected shot, and there has been, I have to say, Ellie, a horrible golfing class between these two, and I think we can safely say Noah need a miracle. Chelsea six, <laughs> FC Noah nil. <laughs> Uh, also in the Conference League tonight, Hearts against Heidenheim at Tynecastle, Kenny Crawford. Half time, Ellie Hearts nil, Heidenheim No, It's been good though, the hosts more than simply holding out against the Germans. The, shot, the stat of 10 shots to three in favour of Hearts tells a lot. Uh, of the story uh, but that also highlights the profligacy is Lauren Shanklin the captain the striker with only one goal this season he's been the chief culprit he was one on one with goalkeeper Kevin Muller after just three minutes and the German goalkeeper got the better of him James Penrice Alan Forrest Blair Spittle and Jan Dander they've all had chances too but spurned those opportunities then against the run of play right at the end of the half Malachi Boateng the former Crystal Palace midfielder now at Hearts had to clear one off the line from Leonard Maloney um, against the run of play so plenty of action but no goals Hearts nil Heidenheim nil and it's 1-1 at half time for Lahn against Swiss side St Gallen in the championship West Brom against Burnley Tom Gale half time Ellie West Brom nil Burnley nil boy could we do with just one of John Southall's goals the hosts on course for their fourth goalless draw from this their eighth home game played so far here at the Hawthorns and they should be behind defensive mistake saw Brighton Loney Jeremy Sarmiento through on goal keeper Alex Palmer stayed big for a long time and saved with his feet a Callum Styles 25 yard strike which whistled just a couple of yards over the bar the closest West Brom have come at half time West Brom nil Burnley nil and two full time scores earlier from the Europa League uh, Galatasaray 3 Tottenham 2 and uh, Olympiakos 1 Rangers one, both of those were 5.45 kickoffs. So second half commentary to come on Manchester United against Pauk at Old Trafford. And we'll bring you up to date with uh, events also today in the Championship with Coventry City getting rid of the very long-serving Mark Robbins as manager. But first, let's get the news here on Five Live with Joel McKenzie. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Premier League. This is BBC Radio Five Live. Thanks, Ellie. And we start with some breaking news. In the past few minutes, it's been confirmed that three people have been charged in relation to Liam Payne's death. That's according to Argentina's Public Prosecutor's Office. The former One Direction singer died last month at the age of 31 after falling from a third-floor balcony of a hotel in Buenos Aires. All three are facing drugs charges and one is accused of abandonment of a person followed by death. We'll have more on this this evening. President Biden spoken publicly about his party's defeat at the hands of Donald Trump, saying setbacks are unavoidable, but giving up is unforgivable. He promised a peaceful and orderly transition and praised Kamala Harris for giving her whole heart to her campaign. Our correspondent Anna Foster was listening to Mr Biden's speech in the Rose Garden at the White House. 
A speech which was designed, I think, you know, very much for, for him, for his supporters. Of course, he didn't take this moment, and I don't think he ever would have done, he didn't take the, the moment to sort of attack Donald Trump, what he brought to the campaign, you know, the, mo the points of, of difference which they had. He really made a point. More than once, he talked about the peaceful transition of power after what happened, of course, at the US Capitol here in Washington. The Bank of England's cut interest rates for the second time since 2020, from 5 to 4.75%. The bank's governor, Andrew Bailey, says he expects a gradual reduction in rates as inflation has fallen below the government's 2% target. Roblox says it's improving safety features, changing the way under-13s can play and interact with other users. The platform allows players to create their own games and has around 70 million daily users. Our technology reporter is Tom Gherkin. According to the media regulator Ofcom, Roblox is the most popular game in the UK for children aged 8 to 12. But it's faced criticism over its protections for young users, with one person telling the BBC in May he'd been approached on Roblox and asked for sexual images. At the time, Ofcom, the regulator for online safety, told tech firms to hide toxic content from children and it published draft codes of practice. And a team of climate scientists is warning that the mega-rich are using private planes like taxis. The Swedish researchers calculated that carbon dioxide emissions from private aviation rose by 46% between 2019 and 2023. Asia is home to the most extraordinary life. The largest owls. The world's smallest elephants. The richest seas on the planet. The biggest of all big cats. The world's rarest bear. Asia with David Attenborough. If you think you've seen the best the natural world has to offer, think again. Watch on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sports. With Eleanor Oldroyd. Listen on BBC Sounds. And we've got second half commentary of Manchester United against Pauk on the way, but just some other sports news to bring you. The Women's Nations League draw took place in Neon earlier today. Now, these matches will be played during international windows in February, April and May. England have been drawn with Spain, Belgium and Portugal in A3. In Group A1, Scotland have Germany, Netherlands and Austria. And in A4, Wales will face Italy, Denmark and Sweden. BBC Sports women's football news reporter Emma Sanders has been following the draw and it's a familiar one for England. Yeah and as you say Spain the big one really it just had to be a blockbuster tie the one all of the neutrals wanted and England probably didn't want it's of course a repeat of the Women's World Cup final that took place in Australia last year and that Spain came out on top in they've had some big meetings England and Spain England beat beat them in the ex, in extra time of their quarter final en route to winning the Women's Euros in 2022 if you can remember that so a huge test for, for them, um, but a good marker to see where they will be in their defence of their European crown. Um, obviously, we're building up to Switzerland next year. And as you say, Belgium, the team that the Lionesses lost to in the Nations League in this competition last year, and that played such a huge role in them failing to qualify for the Olympics on behalf of Team GB. So yeah, two, two teams that they probably didn't want to see again. It's always worth asking about the format. Just explain that again and, and, and what's at stake here. Yeah, the tournament follows a, a similar format to the men's event. So there's 53 nations divided into three leagues. Knockout ties will be played over two legs, which is a recent change. But most notably, the Nations League format and the performances within that essentially affect qualification for the 2027 Women's World Cup. So it's a big deal, really important competition for the home nations. The top two teams in each group remain in League A for the European qualifying route to that World Cup. So really important. So tricky draw for England, but also really tricky for Scotland, Germany and the Netherlands. Absolutely. A really tough group for Scotland. Austria are in the mix as well. And they have some talented players who mainly come from the German Bundesliga. So definitely keep an eye on them as well. But Germany, one of the best te teams in the world, record holders in the, in the European major tournaments. They've won eight of the 13 Euros. They're two-time World Cup winners uh, beat England pretty convincingly at Wembley last month as well, let's not forget. So, yeah, huge, huge team in the group. And the Netherlands as well, European champions under Serena Wiegmann um, back in 2017. So there is real pedigree in that group, a really, really tough one for Scotland. And away from the international game, uh, I've read quite a lot about this. This is cre creating a bit of a stir. Arsenal women having to move their big Champions League game against Bayern Munich next month 
away from Emirates Stadium because of a scheduling clash with the men's team. It's not a great look. No, it isn't a great look. And as you say, it's because of that clash with the men's team who have been drawn in the quarterfinal of the EFL Cup against Crystal Palace. There's all sorts around it. Palace have got several Premier League games that can't really be moved either side. So Arsenal have taken the decision to move the women's game. They're currently in negotiations with UEFA to see what their best option is at the moment. It looks like they're trying to get the game moved to Meadow Park, where the women have played plenty of their WSL games in the past. But there's an issue with that as well, because it doesn't currently meet UEFA regulations so that, you know, there's going to have to be some leeway there by UEFA. As I say, really not ideal situation. Tickets have been on sale since September. So there's a lot of frustrated fans out there. That's for sure. Thanks, Emma, for that. Just one game in the championship this Thursday night. West Brom nil, Burnley nil at half time. Earlier today, Coventry City boss Mark Robbins, the English Football League's longest serving manager, has been sacked by the championship club. He leaves Coventry 17th in the table and equal on points with Plymouth in the relegation spots. JB McEnough spoke to Aaron Paul about his sacking on the latest 72 plus podcast. I'll be honest, if there's one manager in this league, and we've spoken about Mark Robbins before, who deserves time to turn things around, and he has done that. You know, you look at the last two seasons, slow starts, yes, and I'll go back even further than that in terms of what he's done at that football club, constantly having to reshape and, you know, add to the squad, selling players year on year and still delivering performances. You know, again, yes, get to a playoff final, didn't quite get there, FA Cup run last year. It's ridiculous, Aaron. And I've got to say, in this industry, seeing what we do, not a lot shocks me these days, but that one definitely has done today. Well, you can hear a lot more on that uh, on the full 72 plus podcast on the Football Daily feed right now on BBC Sounds. Alice Capsey is set to become a high profile casualty of England's group stage exit at the T20 World Cup when the squad for the Tour of South Africa is named next week. Capsey will not be part of the group for the T20 and test legs of the multi format tour in November and December. In tennis, defending champion Iga Sriontek has been knocked out of the WTA finals in Saudi Arabia after group rival Barbara Krejcheva beat Coco Goff to secure her place in the semi finals. And Tommy Fleetwood shot a 10 under par 62 to equal the course record and lead by one shot after the opening round of the Abu Dhabi Championship. So 0-0 at halftime between Manchester United and Pauk in the Europa League. Uh, we're just a few minutes away from the second half there. And uh, Rene Moulenstein, former Manchester United assistant manager, is with us. And uh, we've spoke a bit about the uh, current assistant manager at Old Trafford, um, Ruud van Nistelrooy who says he doesn't know whether he's going to stay or not. And when we were talking about this, you, you said that when you went to Bromby, you didn't take your own team and you regretted it. So just kind of tell us a bit more about that. What yeah, because that? when you come into a new environment, you, uh, you, have, you, have, you, know, you have to get to used to, to the players, to the other members of staff, and they've got their own ideas. But the key is to making sure that you've got your ideas and you need a few people with you assistant goalkeeping coach and probably a few others to make sure that that message gets across really, really quickly and it's a consistent message. Otherwise, you have to educate the other members of staff to then go to the players. That's why I can fully see where Ruben Almerim is coming from. And and obviously, he has to, He if he decides to keep Root, then he has to get to know Root. Root has to mm. get to know him, the way he works. And that takes a little bit of time, you know? So it's, it's more important that he has the people that he knows and they can all get yes. the players together than having that continuity between the players and somebody who's who knows the club has been around the club for a, a long time in, in different stages like like Rude has. Yeah, but uh, I think in some ways what what Man United needs is a you know a, a fresh look and a fresh approach, and he wants to give that with all his people and uh, you know and a new voice uh, you know and I think that's important. Well, he's on his way out now with his uh, jumper neatly zipped up to his neck. Rude van Nistelrooy, um, slightly less flowing locks than he did in his playing days, Conor McNamara. But it'll uh, be interesting to see whether he can finally get a win for Manchester United in the Europa League this season. Yes, thanks, Ellie. Team's back out, ready to go for the second half at Old Trafford. Manchester United had more possession, more territory in the first 45 minutes. But, but it was the Manchester United goalkeeper, Andre Onana, who was forced to make the most saves in that first half. Can Pau put Manchester United under pressure in this second period? Manchester United defending the Stretford end. Early shrill whistle from the referee, Radu Petrescu from Romania. 
And for a free kick to Manchester United and for Victor Lindelof just outside his own penalty area. No changes in personnel. Manchester United's team, which features three alterations from the starting 11 against Chelsea in the Premier League of the weekend. Onana in goal behind a back four of Mazraoui, Lindelof, Evans and Dello. Casemiro alongside Ugarte in the midfield. Then a line of three, Ahmad and Garnacho either side of Bruno Fernandes. And Rasmus Hoyland, who did have one headed chance, although I say headed, woke him off his shoulder and saved by the goalkeeper. That's been his only clean cut opportunity. The visitors, Pauk, Croatian international Dominic Nick. Kotoski in goal, they've got Johnny Otto, formerly of Wolves, Thomas Kajora, Omar Colley and Baba Rachman, formerly of Chelsea in the midfield. More on their team in just a moment as Manchester United come forward. Ahmad to the edge of the penalty area, rolled it in front of where he thought Bruno Fernandes was going to run, but the Manchester United captain had put on the brakes, he wasn't occupying that space. And Pauk regained possession, they've got Stefan Schwab and Namaged Ozdoyev in the midfield. Andrea Zivkovic, the Serbian international on one wing, Tyson, the former Brazilian international on the other, Matti Kamara, who had one good shot saved out for a corner by Andre Onana in the first half, he's in the hole behind the striker, Tarek Tisudali. Onana has possession, away to our left-hand side, rolls it short to Victor Lindelof, Kamara sprinting after him. Here's Casemiro, under pressure, tries to play the ball up towards Bruno Fernandes, not an easy one to receive, but he does get the touch, and now Masrawi will spray it out to the left wing, and there's room for Garnacho, bearing down on the penalty area, Dallo tried to pull it back for Bruno Fernandes, and it's a last gas touch by Kajora to put it out for a corner, that's where Manchester United continue to look at their most dangerous on the counter-attack. Absolutely, it was the pass cross field from Masrawi into the feet of Garnacho, the overlapping run from Dallo, the left back, and he actually looks to cut it into exactly the right area into Bruno Fernandes. Many of the visiting Greek media have been enjoying the Manchester United hospitality of the break, they're already making their way back to their seats now. It's a capacity crowded Old Trafford this evening, plenty of Greek voices in amongst them. This is Ugarte's delivery towards the back post. Johnny Otto out there, heads it away ahead of Garnaccio, but it comes straight back to the Argentinian. He's crossed low into the penalty area, left by Lindelof, Casemiro tries to shoot, and Papa Rachman clears it away. But that must be five times in the game that Manchester United have sold dummies, allowed the ball to go through legs. Here's Garnaccio to the byline, Johnny Otto slides again and puts it out for a corner. Corner to Manchester United, nil-nil against Pauk on five live. Yeah, I'm smiling because... I agree with you, Connor. There's been about four or five dummies. Too or many, I overs. Think. Well, it's clearly something they've been doing on the training ground because you don't see that many so often without Not a bit of a accident, focus on yeah. it and it must be the rude influence. It's very five-a-side, that's what I would say about, about these little dummies and shimmies from Manchester United. As it's played towards Abad, edge of the area by Bruno Fernandes. Clever idea, he didn't put enough on it. He was playing it to the player on the edge of the box, but it was too soft, needed to be firmer. Ugarte swings it back out towards Bruno Fernandes, who had taken the corner, Zipkovic in ahead of him, and the ball is kept by Bruno Fernandes to take a throw at himself. I think if you score two or three goals, then you can do all those dummies and leaving your legs open and letting the ball go through, but when it's still nil-nil, it comes across as unnecessarily fancy. And it's become a little bit predictable now. Mm, good point, here's a mad shot, deflected, out comes the keeper off his goal line to ensure it doesn't go for the corner, and Katarski gets there first, wearing a sort of teal-coloured bluey-green away to our right-hand side. Hoyland comes to put pressure on him, forces him to pick the ball up. Manchester United are playing the second in a run of four home matches in a row. Leicester were beaten here in the League Cup last week. That's the third, of course, it is now. Chelsea in the Premier League in the weekend. The third game tonight against Pauk. And, and Leicester come to be the visitors in the Premier League here on Sunday. Four home matches in a row. They'll be hoping to remain unbeaten in all of them for Ruud van Nistelrooy. And then it's Ruben Amorim time. Here come Manchester United forward. Over the halfway line with Diogo Dallo. Gets it back again from Garnacho. Then the looping ball over the top, which Garnacho is cantering after. Johnny Otto slow to react this time, but he's done well to recover. Garnacho tries to spin him. Johnny Otto stands his ground. Garnacho has to play it back again. Back to Diogo Dallo, some 15 yards outside the penalty area. Gives it back to Garnacho. Chance to steady himself. Low ball to Bruno Fernandes. Now the delivery. Ahmad leaves. Enter on target. It's here. Ahmad Diallo gives Manchester United the lead. A header from the smallest man on the pitch and he slides at his knees and he celebrates in front of the travelling Pauk fans it was a good delivery from Bruno Fernandes 
And five minutes into the second half, Manchester United finally take the lead tonight. Manchester United one pack nil. Amad Diallo. What a header that is. The back post area. Manchester United have targeted that all evening off crosses. It's Bruno Fernandes lifting the ball into a beautiful area and Ahmed's header is absolutely pinpoint back across the face of goal. Enough trajectory on it that it drops inside that far post. A superb header from the best player on the pitch so far tonight. Now, they're all complaining. So what are they complaining about? Is it offside, I wonder? As Bruno Fernandes plays it into the penalty area. Ahmed is miles onside. It can't be that. Could there be anything? I don't know what they're complaining about there. We've seen the replay of the goal again. Ahmad, he's up against Baba Rackman. I mean, maybe could you say his hands are on the defender's shoulders? Nothing that you would say of any force. I just wonder whether they're looking at Rasmus Hoyland. Goal stands. Yeah, Referee points to the centre circle. Ahmad gets his second goal of the campaign. Scored against Brighton in August. Hasn't started a Premier League game since September. He's one of those who have been wanting to impress the watching Ruben M. Odim tonight, and he's done so. Absolutely, and you know what? That goal does not happen unless the run from Hoyland and Casemiro, the advancing midfielder, take away the two Pauk centre-backs and create the space at the back post. Really clever for Manchester United. Unselfish running we spoke about in the build-up to this game. The unselfishness required to score goals. We've just seen it there from Hoyland and Casemiro. It is a breakthrough for Lou Van Roy's team tonight. Now, can they build on it? Manchester United have only scored two first-half goals in the Premier League this season. Zivkovic comes forward from Pauk down the other end and sends a left-footed shot wide to the target, but he was away from Dallo for a moment there. That was dangerous. Yeah, he's been the most dangerous player along with Kamara. Zivkovic on that right-hand side for Pauk. He's looked a real threat. He stabs at the ball inside the 18. And he looks up to the skies. He knows he should have done better. But that's Manchester United. As soon as they take the lead, they find themselves so vulnerable. It's a really poor execution from Zivkovic, but a player who's looked dangerous tonight. So Manchester United's fourth game in the Europa League this season. They've now scored in all four matches. They have yet to win one of these. Is tonight going to be the night? The assist for the goal for Bruno Fernandes, his first Europa League assist of the campaign. Free kick to Manchester United, midway inside their own half. Dello takes it back to Johnny Evans. This is five live for the BBC. Earlier on this evening, defeats for Tottenham away at Galatasaray. Rangers were held 1-1 at Olympiacos. Chelsea are running away with it in an 8 o'clock game in the Europa Conference League against Noah. It was 6-0 to Chelsea at half-time. Hearts also in action against Heidenheim at Torrencastle. 1-0 at Old Trafford to the home team. Fancy footwork from Kubara gives it to Baba Rachman taking on Casemiro, last touch off the Brazilian. That will be a throw into Pauk down by the corner flag that they attack on the left hand side. But Dello, who turned 22 in July, took that really well. I mean, I'm sure part of his intent was to give it back across goal that Hoyland was there, but he's also thinking there's a chance this will go in against the far post to the dead. Down goes Hoyland, fouled by Schwab, free kick to Manchester United midway inside their own half. Yeah, you're spot on about the goal, Connor. He puts it back across goal into an area where it causes so much confusion. It's brilliant execution of the header for Mamed. And, and like I said, he was a real threat for Manchester United in the first half. And he's picked up exactly where he left off. Goal at the back post. He must be delighted with it. I interviewed Cody Gakpo at Anfield on Saturday. And and the goal that he scored in the game against Brighton, a little bit like that, you know, you're playing it in, I think it's a cross, but thinking if it doesn't get a touch, it'll nestle into the far side. That was the headed equivalent of that from Ahmad. Here comes Tyson, that's got to be a push by Ugarte, he's got to be booked for that. Ugarte didn't want Tyson to get the shot away, bearing down on the edge of the penalty area, he's taken one for the team there, but it will be a free kick in a promising position for Pauk. This is their most dangerous set piece of the night so far, Ugarte booked. Uh, Tyson started on the left-hand side for Pauk, but he drifted centrally there. He picks the ball up and just gathers speed, dribbling beyond Manchester United's midfield line, and Agate has to make some sort of challenge because no centre-back stepped out and engaged with him, and you can see he's disappointed with himself, Agate. He's been brilliant. Hopefully that doesn't change the way that he plays. First booking of the evening for either side. 
Manuel Ugarte, who played for two seasons under Ruben Amorim at Sporting. They won the 2022 League Cup together in Portugal. We'll go for an updated stat for Bridge in a moment, but we've got to stay for this free kick here. Tyson looks like he fancies it. Schwab is standing it over to 10 yards outside the penalty area. Central location. Onana knows what's coming. I'll be really surprised if they dink this. This will be a shot. Tyson and Schwab. Right footed option and a left footed option. And Schwab runs up to it. It's left footed. It's low. It's an easy save for Andre Onana. No power on that at all. Back to Stamford Bridge. Chelsea, Noah, John Southall. Would you believe it, Connor? Still 6 0. Chelsea 6, FC Noah 0. They have had the chances, though. Felix with a soap toe poke. Saved by Chancherovic, the keeper. And then Kinku also just denied as well. Chelsea 6, Noah 0. Just a strange incident here as Onana tried to come out. We mentioned the free kick had gone in really softly. And, and as he came to try and throw it, there was a, a strange maneuver by Tissu Dali, who just sort of ran and tried to, you know, not quite rugby tackle him, but wrapped his arm around him and wouldn't let him run forward, which the referee had to come across and, and sort out. And Tissu Dali for, for nothing there has picked up a yellow card. That is completely needless from his point of view. So Ugarte and Tissu Dali both in the book. Let's go back to Tyne Castle to Kenny Crawford. 55 minutes gone, corner, Hearts nil, Heidenheim nil. Remember, both these sides looking to make it three wins from three in this competition, in this campaign. Hearts really forced this in the first half. They're doing the same in the second, although the Germans with a little bit more possession in this half, and they do have quality. Finally poised, Hearts nil, Heidenheim nil. Ahmad crosses from the right-hand side for Manchester United. Stefan Schwab is on hand to clear it out for a throw-in. Throw-in to be taken by the captain, Bruno Fernandes. Gets it back from Mazraoui. Tyson is across to put it out for another Manchester United throw. So Christian Eriksen has gone for a, a warm-up jog. Marcus Rashford is down there too. Xerxes. Four or five Manchester United subs warming up for Sandro Martinez. Play continues. Diego Dallo tries to shoot from the edge of the box. And, well, it was speculative and he was never in danger of scoring. Yeah, that's really poor execution from Dallo. He's obviously a right-footed left-back and he just finds himself on the top of the box. He looks just to snatch across the ball. We, we have seen him caught a fair few good strikes in a Manchester United shirt, but that certainly was not one of them. Back to Tynecastle, a goal for Kenny Crawford. Yeah, and I did finish my last update by saying Heidenheim had quality corner. Hearts nil, Heidenheim won. The Germans are in front. A really good goal, it's got to be said. The break down the left-hand side, Matthias Honzak. Austrian substitute, fine cross, and then Sir Lord Conte, brilliant diving header into the top right-hand corner. The Germans are in front, Hearts nil, Heidenheim won. One game in the championship tonight, West Brom against Burnley, it was an 8 o'clock kick-off into the second half of the Hawthorns, but we'll go there in a moment because Diallo's on the attack here, and Ahmad Diallo's shot comes off the knee of the goalkeeper and out for a corner. He nearly got his second there, is it? Oh, that combination between Bruno Fernandes and Ahmad Diallo on this right-hand side for Manchester United has been lightning at times Bruno Fernandes just releases him down the right-hand side into a goal-scoring position the pass is absolutely exquisite the vision to see that run in behind is second to none we will go to the Hawthorns after this corner Manchester United you have to say there's been an uplift since Ten Hag's departure the body language is better Bruno Fernandes sends it in Casemiro's header Dallo head tennis on the edge of the six-yard box back out to Bruno Fernandes sends it in low loads of pouch defenders there and eventually Ozdoyev is able to clear the ball away maybe chance of a counter-attack no Johnny Evans will be able to intercept that so belatedly to the Hawthorns and to Tom Gale Neil Burnley, Neil Connor, the visitors have had a goal chalked off, deep cross headed home by Jaden Anthony but the Burnley man was a judge to have pushed Callum Styles in the back, it's West Brom nil, Burnley nil. 1-0 to Manchester United at Old Trafford, Ganasio into the penalty area, trying to get it onto his right boot he's taken down to the box, that looked a penalty to me, referee says corner, as he was pulling the trigger, Ganasio's swinging foot seemed to be kicked away from him but the referee from Romania, who was, it has to be said, is he very close to it, had a brilliant view, much closer than us, yeah. he says corner. He seems sure, the referee, like you say, Connor, he had an exceptional view, he got himself into a brilliant position, the referee, to make a good decision. I'm just watching a really slow replay here, it's Johnny Otto who's the closest player. Three players around Garnacho. is there contact? I've seen them given, yes. I have seen those given. Absolutely, I remember there was one last season, um, 
Kelvin Phillips when he was playing with West Ham. And it's one where, as a defender, when, when you've got to kick the ball and you, you plant your foot in front of the attacker, you know, although their collision is into you, have you caused them, you know, to, to if you cause the connection by putting your foot there? I mean, it's not as cut and dry as you think, as Bruno Fernandes off balance shoots wide of the target. You can see why Manchester United ferociously appealed for that and then when you see the replay you can see why the referee thinks probably not whenever the players are running at speed it's like the one in the first half with Ahmed where I thought it was a penalty but when the players are running at such speed it's probably very easy for the referee to give the decision but you have to remain you know really clear-headed with it and it's not the speed of the movement it's the contact Manchester United leading thanks to Ahmed's goal this evening we have reached the hour mark at Old Trafford. Several of the Pauk subs have been out for a warm-up. See down there, Fido Chalov, a Russian forward. He's taking off his tracksuit top. He's a centre-forward, looks like he's getting ready to come on. We mentioned the first half. At nil-nil in the game, Pauk have been quite conservative. When they had possession, they were playing it around the back, they'd roll it to the keeper. They weren't looking to surge unless it was absolutely on. But now that they're 1-0 down, will they throw a bit braver in the game? And if they do, will that leave gaps for United? Here comes Bruno Fernandes, unlucky. Tried to cut it through into the path of Garnacho, but intercepted by Johnny Otto. Yeah, it's interesting with Ahmed on the right-hand side. I said earlier that he's probably been the best player for Manchester United this evening. And in this second half, he's had a lot of joy. And he's right back behind him. Masrawi has actually started this second half deeper. He's not been going as advanced. And that's just given Ahmed more space and time to go 1v1 with his fullback. He's got a lot of joy from that so far. Manchester United are preparing to bring on Marcus Rashford and Christian Eriksen. As Kamara here plays it up towards Tyson. Tyson leaves it for Baba Rahman. Kamara tried to return it down the channel, but it goes straight out of play. That was the that was the old man's battle there, Johnny Evans against Tyson. They're over 70 years of age between the pair of them. Right. Triple change coming for Manchester United, double change coming for, for Pauk, so this will take a, a few moments. We mentioned Rashford and Eriksen, also Lissandro Martinez coming on for Ruud van Nistelrooy here. And with Chelov coming on for Pauk, there's another familiar name from Premier League years gone by. Who remembers Timue Bakayoko? former Chelsea player who made his name at Monaco Chelsea played 40 million pounds to sign him in in 2017 six years on the books at Stamford Bridge out on loan for five of those six years didn't work out for him at all in in uh, South London um, now playing in Greece with uh, Pauk and about to come on here at Old Trafford so there'll be five substitutes all made in, in one sweep three of them for Manchester United two of them for Pauk this is Colley inside the centre circle. We've got Rene Mullins to watch of the game for us back in the studio. Very important goal for Ahmad. Rene, what have you made of the second half so far? I think <clears throat> I think United. Um, I think it's a chance and a save by Onana. Sorry to jump back in, Rene. That's about as big a chance as the visitors have had tonight. Tissu Dali, seven or eight yards out, should have scored. Rene. I was uh, I was just to say that Rude must have been uh, disappointed that he didn't go, didn't take any of the chances. I thought there were some poor decisions there on the final third, but they've come out with even more energy the second half. I think they moved the ball quicker. The pass from Fernandes for the Allo was outstanding. Great, great header, great goal. But he needed to get a second to put the game to bed. Thanks, Rene. So here come the Manchester United chains. Just uh, Garnacho makes way for Rashford. Ugarte table depart for Eriksen and Martinez is going to come on in place of Diogo Dallo so Lissandro Martinez gets a warm welcome onto the pitch I mean, those are three hard and experienced internationals to bring on Rashford, Martinez and, and Eriksen just showing the strength and depth that is in this squad that Ruben Amorim is about to Inherit. What, what did you make tonight of Ugarte's performance, is it? Yeah, good. I actually thought it's probably the best I've seen him in a United shirt. I think maybe he's going to be a slow burner coming to life in this Manchester United team, but I think he's got all the attributes to sniff out play, pick up second balls. He's, like you say earlier in commentary, Connor, he's not going to set things on fire with his forward passing, but I think he's going to keep things simple, and that's what Manchester United need. 
Polk have taken off their captain Schwab. Bakayoko into the midfield. Chalov has replaced the striker Tissudali. Here is Ahmad on the attack for Manchester United. Into the penalty area, pulled it back for Bruno Fernandes. Difficult one to control. It was played at him forcefully from close distance and he wasn't able to get it under his control. Referee blows the whistle for a foul by Casemiro. That will be free kick to Pauk just outside their own penalty area. So Martinez has gone to left back. Straight swap with Dello. Evans and Lindelof still the two central defenders. Mazraoui on the right hand side. Eriksson into the centre of the midfield and Rashford in his favourite position off the left wing with Ahmad Diallo on the right. 1-0 to Manchester United. This isn't over yet, there's too sh slender a margin here for Ruud van Nistelrooy to be anyway relaxed about this and still 25 minutes plus the stoppages to go. Well, I think that chance for, for Tissadali, who's the striker, he's just been replaced, that was his last involvement. That was nailed on, had to be a goal. Striker in any European competition should be finishing those types of chances. Tyson, right wing now, just cuts it back low, straight to Casemiro, who's well positioned, that was poor from Tyson. Now, can Manchester United counter? Rashford, good ball over the top. Ahmad runs after it, Colley beats him to it, much taller defender, able to stoop in with his head, nudge it away, and then plays it left-footed up towards Fido Talov, up against Viktor Lindelov. And then Bakayoko for the first time involved, neat and tidy in the midfield, pushes it on to Tyson. Pauk have got a second win, you know. They're coming forward with more gusto now, and I think their Romanian coach has decided, look, we're not going to just settle for a 1-0 defeat here. We believe we can get back into it, and it's worth the risk. Johnny Otto has taken over the captain's armband since the departure of Schwab. Here is Colley, one of the two central defenders for Pauk, plays a 1-2 with Kamara. Colley then to his right-hand side to Thomas Kijora. Johnny, lots of noise from the travelling Greek supporters, they believe an equaliser is very much on the cards here. And they've got a good record lately of comebacks, Pauk. Their last game in this competition, they were 2-0 down uh, against Victoria Pleasant. They came back to draw 2-2 with late goals. And in the, the league of the weekend, they were 1-0 down late on against Lamia, and they came back to win that game by two goals to one. So this Pauk team have got late goals in them. And they won't fade away here, they'll believe that at 1-0 this is still very much available to them. Baba Rahman, a once of Chelsea, left-hand side. Manchester United have still had more of the ball overall, but this has been a good spell of possession for Pauk. It's rolled back to the goalkeeper, Katarski. Can they create more big opportunities, as they have already done tonight, but crucially this time, can they take them? Chelsea running away with it at Stamford Bridge. 0-0 still. Hearts and Heidenheim at Tynecastle. Kamara to Tyson, who's back out on the left wing. Chelov tries to return it to him. Good challenge from Lindelof. Out it goes for a throw in to Pauk. 1-0 yeah. to Manchester United. Excellent from Lindelof. Stepping in, making the challenge, stopping the attack. I think Lindelof and Johnny Evans have done that really well tonight when called upon. They've stepped into midfield, made the challenge, forced back. So easy to dive in in those moments, but they've both been equal to it. Great to visit Christensen alongside us here at Old Trafford tonight for this uh, Europa League game. This is match four of the league phase. Four more games to go for both of these teams before it reaches the knockout stages. More live football to come over the weekend here on Five Live. We've got Wolves against Southampton, our pick of the three o'clock games on Saturday with Ian Dennis around the grounds. Brighton against Manchester City is the 5.30 match. You can listen to that in full here on Five Live. And another couple of games on Sunday. We'll have Manchester United back in action here at Old Trafford on Five Live against Leicester. Two o'clock start for that one. And then a big game at Stamford Bridge at 4.30. Chelsea against Arsenal. You can listen to that in full here on Five Live. Baba Rachman for Pau. Tries to cross on the left-hand side. His attempted delivery is intercepted, though. And Ahmad tries to launch a counter-attack. Good hard-working in the midfield by Ozdoyev. And then he's shuffled off the field of play and Pau get a throw-in wide on the left-hand side for them. 21 minutes to play. Colley on the halfway line. Hoyland runs to put pressure on him. Bakayoko. Heidenheim taking the lead against Hearts this evening. Time castle. As goes down back towards Onana. And this is Eriksson bringing it over the halfway line. So... I mentioned that Tottenham had been beaten away from home, Rangers held. I think a moment ago I said that it was still nil in Hearts, but they are behind in that game, just to clarify. So, Lindelof has possession 10 yards outside his own half. Back to Onana again. Onana, who saves what's been sent at him. One dramatic save to deny Kamara, but otherwise the 
efforts and attempts have been tame. Good interception in the midfield, but they don't hold on to it for very long. And then, now, Tyson has it, bearing down on the penalty area. Low ball into the box. Maybe a chance for Chelov. Back to Bakayoko. To the right-hand side is a clever movement. Johnny Otto, low to Tyson, tried to turn. Johnny Evans attracted him. Corner to Pauk. They are building momentum, the Greek champions. They, they very much are. Manchester United are actually playing into their hands right now. They are giving them an invitation to attack them. And they're not needing to refuse the invitation, Pauk, because they're building, like you say, Connor, they are building momentum. They can smell blood. It's gone a bit flat, the game. They've recognised this is their opportunity corner from the right hand side hush around the Stretford end we've got a close up view of this here it comes, low trajectory Bruno Fernandes at the front post and the clearance is completed by Marcus Rashford Ahmad was the only player who stayed forward, he's done well jumping to head it on for himself, Johnny Otto comes sweeping across from right back to the left back position do you know what, he's played really well tonight, the former Wolves player he's, he, been, he's been probably the best player on the pitch I agree, he's been brilliant, he's been uh, tracking Ahmed when he can but, but that piece there, he used all of his experience, clearly in the Premier League, against Ahmad just to stop the ball, stop the counter-attack, because Ahmad had won the first contact and he was through. Johnny Otto, who played against Manchester United in a Europa League semi-final in 2017, that was when he was a Celta Vigo player. He also reached the quarter-finals of this competition when he was at Wolves. Here in a Pau team that trail 1-0. At Old Trafford, Tyson comes forward, gives it to Baba Rackman, back to Stamford Bridge in just a moment, but let's see what Pauk do here. Tyson on the edge of the box, gives it back to Ozdoyev, back to little Tyson again, then he rolls it back to Bakayoko. So, I mean, it, it does seem an age since we had a goal from, from John Southall. Surely one was due, John. I know, it's been ridiculous. Chelsea 7, FC no, um, nil. Really good through ball from Jao Felix to Chris Rinkunku. First effort saved on the rebound, right of the area, tight angle. Tucked in his ninth of the season. Chelsea 7, FC no nil. Thanks very much, Chelsea hosting Arsenal the weekend. Arsenal are going through a little bit of a tricky patch of their own. And Chelsea appears to have got their groove back, certainly banging in the goals this evening. Back to Tynecastle. Kenny Crawford watching Hearts and Heidenheim. Yeah, 71 minutes gone, Connor Hearts nil, Heidenheim won. It's been a totally different heart to Hearts this half. They've struggled to create chances, just the one effort, a tame shot by Alan Forrest straight at Kevin Muller, the goalkeeper, in that goal in the 57th minute by the German, scored by Sir Lord Conte. He was their player of the game, and he's off as a sub now, but that was a lovely header into the top corner. Hearts nil, Heidenheim won. Tomorrow evening we've got Autumn Nations commentary, Rugby Ireland against New Zealand, 10 past 8 kickoff, full commentary here on 5 Live of that one. This evening it's Europa League and Europa Conference League, we're concentrating on Manchester United leading Pau thanks to Ahmad Diallo's header, here's Rasmus Hoyland, 15 yards inside his own half, challenged by Ozdoyev and Pau with it back again and Manchester United have been forced to do a lot of defending here, is he? Yeah, Hoyland getting a rare touch. Ahmed, quick feet, escaping away from the uh, the defensive structure that Manchester United are in. They're being forced in by Pauk. Rasmus Hoyland, I think that little piece of involvement there kind of sums up his performance. He's been a little bit off the pace, just a little bit. I think he's better when he's running in behind. He needs to start developing that ability to link up play, get his wingers in and around him, play off them, get himself in the box. Well, Sandro Martinez, who's never knowingly far from trouble, um, got involved in a... A differing of opinion with Andreas Zivkovic there, they were squaring up to each other, the referee held a play to go across and have a word with the two of them, I mean, no one raised arms or anything like that, but they were just sort of locking antlers, as Pauk prepared to make another change, there is uh, Kirill Despidov, who's a Bulgarian international, he's getting ready to come on, a midfielder, scored against Shamrock Rovers in the playoff for this competition in the Europa League back in August. Sandro Martinez, not a great touch, but Johnny Evans is able to clear it for Manchester United. Rashford keeps it in play. Eriksson, who's been in the goals in this competition, tries to flick it forward. And Rashford, who after he'd flicked it on, had been fouled. Referee decided there was no significant or sufficient advantage for Manchester United there, so he's brought it back for a Manchester United free kick. So here comes the change, and Despotov is going to come on in place of Mani Kamara. Kamara, who had some great touches in the first half, he's got a bit quiet in the second period. You can see why these coaches making this change now. Yeah, he had a good impact in the first half, Kamara. He got himself into some really nice positions. In behind Tissudali, who was the nine in the first half. Got a good shot off as well, forcing a save for Manana. But his 
race is run tonight. Are Manchester United going to get their first European win of the season? 1-0 they lead. The clock ticking on into the final quarter of an hour now. Bakayoko does well against Mizrahi. He's been good since coming on the former Chelsea man. Bakayoko. Challenged here by Casemiro. Fouled by Casemiro. Free kick to Pauk on the halfway line. Manchester United currently 13th in the Premier League. At this stage last season, they thought things were bad when they were in 8th. That's why the action has been taken by the board, the new owners, new part owners at least, deciding to change the lad at the top. Eric Tanag's departure, Ruben Amorim, they didn't waste any time in announcing him. They've had to wait for his arrival. But particularly the nature of that sporting Lisbon win against Manchester City on Tuesday and how Amorim turned the game around having been 1-0 down after four minutes Phil Foden's early goal and how Sporting tactically turned Pep Guardiola's team inside out has just whetted the appetite of these Manchester United fans to see their new boss here I was watching that game on Tuesday and he, he wore a grey t-shirt very casual Ruben Amorim he'll probably need a few more layers here at Old Trafford by the time he arrives but but yeah, he's, he's very much of that younger generation of manager. Now Babarokna tries to foul Ahmad and he can't. Ahmad! Wow! That is how you do it! From the edge of the penalty area, left-footed strike, spinning beyond the goalkeeper. It hits the inside of the side netting of the way through. Two goals for Ahmad. It's the Ahmad Diallo show for Manchester United tonight in Old Trafford. Well, I'll tell you what, two brilliant finishes from him. Wow, all I can say, two pieces in this. The first one is the sheer strength and power and will to get away from the defender, despite being fouled on multiple occasions. And the second part is the finish. He cuts inside onto his left foot. Yes, it takes a deflection, but yes, it's an absolutely brilliant strike of the ball from Ahmed, and it caps off. Still 15 minutes left, but it caps off what has been an exceptional individual performance from him. Second and third goals of the season for Ahmad. Quickly to Stamford Bridge, John Southall. This is for eight from the penalty spot. Christopher Nkunku, straight down the middle. Chelsea 8, FC 0 and 0. That record is still on. 13 is the Chelsea all-time record. Let's see if they could get a European win. If they got the time to bang in a few more, certainly double figures appears on the cards the way that game has gone. But here, Ahmad with a quite wonderful finish. He's one of those who'll want to impress the new arriving coach. And just looking at the replay here, the scenes of celebration in the technical area. They were all there, Darren Fletcher, Andreas Georgson, Rene Hacke. You know, the, there's clearly a bond and a good vibe between those guys who've had to step in to keep the ship afloat. And they're going to win this now. Mason Mann prepares to come on for the closing stages of the game here for Manchester United. He's been out with a head injury lately. And I'm sure that will be greeted very positively by the Manchester United fans. Mann who started the first two Premier League games this season in August, but he hasn't started in the top flight since, and he got a clash of heads recently that has kept him out of the last few games. <laughs> 78 minutes played. 2-0 to Manchester United, both goals from Ahmad. Just wonder whether it'll be Ahmad who's the guy who's going to be making way. We'll have to wait and see, he's put in a real shift tonight, a lot of forward runs. You can tell he's actually limping off the ball here. I think he was getting a signal from Reid van Nistelrooy to go down. I don't want to be taking any risks with a player who's performed the way he has tonight. Yes, of course, he'd love to go on and complete a Europa League hat-trick tonight, but with the Premier League game of the weekend and having put himself very much in contention to be involved in that, Ahmad will want to be wrapped in cotton wool. Now, Ruth and this Roy is clearly saying, yeah. go down, and Ahmad didn't understand what he said. He came over. What he said to me is, go down. But, of course, that is the enthusiasm of youth. He didn't want to, but finally, he does what his coach says. He sits down, Onana kicks it out, and Manchester United are going to be able to bring on Mason Mount. Yeah, Ruud van Nistelrooy was signalling that to Ahmed for a good minute or so. He was trying to get his message across. I know the Pauk fans are loud, but I think he could hear. I just don't think he could understand what he meant. I think he might well be the guy making way for Mason Mount, who got so much talent, Mason Mount. I think the United fans definitely...
definitely want to see that come to fruition. And Misha, about, I think, a very good example of, you know, Manchester United's transfer dealings in recent years, where they bring in players, enormous transfer fees, big hopes and expectations, and just hasn't happened yet. And they'll hope that it still might do for a player who's still only 25 years of age, Mason Mount. I mean, he's been played for years, isn't he? But he is about to come on here for the closing stages. And I'm watching Ruben Amorim, I'm sure, will be very pleased to see the sort of condition he's in. No, he's a player, if, if Ruben Amorim comes in and he does play the system that we, we think he's going to play in a 3-4-3, can't help but think a player that will profit from that system will be Mason Mount, a sort of an inside forward, a hybrid 10 winger role. He might be second to Bruno Fernandes, but he needs to be ready. Standing ovation from those who can stand around us to greet Ahmad's departure. He's done his reputation, no harm there. Now Mason Mount comes on. Only five Premier League started all of last season. He will now be hoping that he'll get a run of the team and the chance to make more of an impact in the coming weeks and months. Manchester United 2, Pauk Salonika 0. Manchester United unbeaten in the Europa League, but now on the verge of getting their first win. We did mention that Pau came from 2-0 down very late on against Victoria Place, and they were 2-0 down after 84 minutes in that game. So never over till it's over, but you would imagine in these circumstances here at Old Trafford that Surely that particular lightning won't strike twice. Interesting development down on the visitors bench. Shola, Shola Tire, who is a Manchester United young player of the year from three seasons ago. He's getting ready to come on for the Greek club against his old team here. Shola Tire, who's very highly thought of in the background of Manchester United, but never really got the breaks to, to regularly get into Eric Ten Hag's team. He featured a little bit under Solskjaer the closing months of that reign. Yeah, the lone spell at Bolton as well. Yeah, like you say, he never really found the opportunities, so went to seek them elsewhere. Here is Mason Mount, weaving away from Bakayoko, passing it to Mazraoui, chance to look up from the right-hand side, pulled it in towards Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes is hoping to score the third game in a row, but that one didn't sit up for him. Casemiro keeps the attack alive by stretching it out to Rashford on the left. Could pull in! Diving out was the goalkeeper to get there ahead of Hoyland and to punch it away with two gloves as Despidov tries to come forward for Pauk. Good direct ball forward to Chelov, who's controlled it well. Pauk aren't giving up. Tyson, though, is met by a sliding Johnny Evans. And then Lissandro Martinez comes in all muscle and wins the free kick. And that's good, strong, sturdy defending from Manchester United. That's an exceptional tackle from Johnny Evans. He's just coming across. Chelov looks to bring in his teammate. And Johnny Evans was there. The fans absolutely loved that. A nice moment here. As many Manchester United fans realise who's coming on here. Shola, Shola Tire, who was Manchester United's youngest ever player in European football during his time here. He broke a record that had been held for decades by Norman Whiteside. He's the second youngest player to ever appear for Manchester United in the Premier League after Angel Gomez, and now he is on here. Shola, Shola Tire on in place of the veteran Tyson. Let's go back to Time Castle into the closing stages, Hearts against Heidenheim. Kenny Crawford. Yeah, Connor, 83 minutes now, uh, Hearts nil, Heidenheim won. And despite trailing Hearts, really trying to get momentum here and have more possession. Really good chance here for Lauren Shankland. James Penrise cross from the left-hand side. Shankland in at the six-yard box, diving to meet it. Got contact on it, but over the bar. So still Hearts nil, Heidenheim won. From Tynecastle to the Hawthorns, West Brom against Burnley. The Knights' only game in the Championship. Tom Gale. Where it's very nil-nil, Connor. But Scott Parker's visitors knocking hardest on the door. Ball fell to fullback Lucas Perez, edge of the box, let fly with his left boot, hit the base of the post. It is West Brom nil, Burnley nil. Thanks, Tom. Six minutes of normal time to play at Old Trafford. Manchester United leading Pauk by two goals to nil. Both goals from Ahmad. If you're just joining our coverage, one a header, uh, the other a brilliant shot from the edge of the penalty area that he will enjoy watching the replays back of that over and over again. Shuratiri gets a touch, but Casemiro slides in and fouls him. Free kick. Oh, yellow card for Casemiro for that challenge on his former teammate. If there was ever a Casemiro-like <laughs> thing to do, that, that was it. Sliding tackle, misses the ball, and he just uses his hand to stop the progression of the ball going forward for Pauk. 
And he acted all innocent to the referee, he knew exactly what he was doing. Manchester United, Casemiro alongside Eriksen in the engine room of the midfield at the moment. Giuliotto for Pauk, into Bakayoko, over to Shonatire on the right wing now. But Manchester United have got plenty spring in their boots, even this late in the game they will chase and hound and press Pauk and they're not going to let this two-goal lead slip without a fight tonight. This is Colley, left-footed ball, trying to send it cross field, not a bad ball at all, picks out Desperate Dolph. Wants to play a 1-2, but can't get on the other end of it from Johnny Otto. Pauk will get a throw in, level with the edge of the penalty area that they attack down the right-hand side. It's only four and a half minutes of normal time to go now. Johnny. Near the centre circle, to the near side to Baba Rachman. Rachman, who's been actually Pauk's joint top scorer this season. No mean feat given he's a defender. This is Ozdoyev out towards the right wing and Despotov once again Sandro Martinez has looked comfortable in that left full back position and he wins possession back for his team once again you mentioned about you know everyone's suggesting Ruben Amorim has probably got to go to this 3-4-3 formation Ruud van Nistel was asked whether he'd been in contact with Amorim or whether Amorim wanted him to try anything in these games and he said no he said there won't be any contact until he comes yeah they've, they've shifted to a back three Manchester United have in the build up Masrawi in the first half in particular went really, really high like a right winger. Ahmed in front of him tucked inside a little bit, so they were building with a back three. But it's interesting when you highlight Martinez on that left back position right now that that is integral, in my opinion, having some balance on that left hand side. Obviously, absence of Luke Shaw. I wouldn't be surprised if that were to be the first area of recruitment that Manchester United target under the new manager. Ronan looks to be offside, but there's no flag yet. He's running into the penalty area. Rasmus Hoyland doesn't score anyway, and no surprise to see the flag go up. It's one of those where it's actually not the official's fault. That's the instruction they're given, but we sort of all knew he was offside and had to go through the motions there. Yeah, it was a country mile offside to let it progress for another 15 seconds or so but that's where Hoyland is at his best in my opinion I watched him play in the Euros in the summer for Denmark and he was so effective especially against England playing off the back shoulders last line nine I like to call them where he spins into the space and behind and that is the first time tonight we've seen him in that area and, and that is a good point that our Manchester United using Rasmus Hoyland efficiently and effectively in your in your view not not yet but I, I, what I like about him is his adherence to the task. I think he, he if, if anyone sees the second goal back, sorry, Ahmed's first goal back, his role in that is key, although no one would notice it. Here's a Manchester United chance. Bruno Fernandes has picked up Mason Mount here. He gets within 10 yards of the penalty area, tried to set up Rashford, nearly did. Kajora made the interception. The loose ball has fallen to Bruno Fernandes. And then a, a cross of wires because Bruno Fernandes passed it to Rashford. It's a good pass. The reason it wasn't received was Rashford knew he was offside, so he couldn't touch it. He allows it flash through, and Manchester United lose possession. Yeah, it looks like Xerxes is going to get introduced. I think Hoyland's had a. If it is Hoyland, he. He's had a real fair shot to get off the mark tonight. He's put in a good performance in terms of the task. He's remained very task-focused, but what he needs to do is start scoring goals, and they need to provide for him. Yeah, he doesn't get many chances, and I guess that puts pressure on him when a chance does come, that he feels, I've got to take this, I might get another one. Certainly he's had to be patient as he challenges again. I mean, he's, he's, he's young, but he's strong. Uh, too strong on that occasion, he's fouled Omar Kolei, referee says free kick to Pauk on the edge of their own penalty area this break in play will allow the change to be made and Xerxes gets a little hug from, from Ruud van Nistelrooy he will come on as is he predicted in place of Rasmus Hoyland so it's still just the two goals this season in all competitions for the Dane on comes Xerxes who scored on his debut the opening weekend of the campaign against Fulham but he's not scored since he's another who could do it a goal yeah, he assisted didn't he against Fenerbahce he was the guy that assisted Ericsson for the goal in that 1-1 draw against Fenerbahce in the previous round in the Europa League, but he's a player who's definitely not hit the ground running yet in the United shirt, but that's not to say he can. It's not going to have much time to impress, we've only got 30 seconds remaining. Of normal time. Stoppages to be announced in just a moment. Let's go to Tynecastle Hearts against Tynenheim and Kenny Crawford. 
corner the home fans are starting to drift out of the stadium because with 89 minutes gone it's Hearts nil, Heidenheim 2 it's another header, they've picked them off again the Germans, the cross came in from Omar Traore and substitute Jan Schopner headed the ball into the top right hand corner, that's where both headers have ended up in the back of 41 year old Craig Gordon's net, Hearts nil, Heidenheim 2 Rangers drew away at Olympiacos earlier on in the Europa League Spurs have beaten 3-2 Away at Galatasaray, Chelsea have scored eight at home against Noah. Here comes Bruno Fernandes, looking for Manchester United's third. Rashford puts it wide across the face of goal from close range. Marcus Rashford tried to thread it inside the far bottom corner and he put it the wrong side of the post. It comes as no surprise that Bruno Fernandes is the provider. Rashford with the overlapping run on the transition. The timing was perfect, but the finish was just inches away from he looked to shape it sort of curl it back across the face of goal beyond the goalkeeper and had that gone in it, it probably would have put an unfair sheen on the scoreline from a pout point of view not quite sure they are three goals worse off the Manchester United tonight but Rashford would have certainly enjoyed the goal as it is as we've gone into four minutes they'll be added on for stoppages Manchester United are on their way towards a win here it would be Two wins in a draw for Ruud van Nistelrooy. He's three games in interim charge. And that decision to remove Eric Ten Hag. I don't think there'll be too many complaints from Manchester United fans. You won't find too many who said, no, I think we've done the wrong thing there. We should have kept him. The fact that the team have been able to, to steady a ship and go unbeaten since his departure. I don't think there will be much forlorn crying over, over Eric Ten Hag. I don't think there's any doubts that Manchester United have actually looked better as a team since his departure and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way to Ten Hag but I think from an attacking sense some would argue that they have played in inverted commas easier opposition but you still have to get the job done and uh, like I said I think Manchester United fans there's much anticipation ahead of the arrival of the new manager and how they're going to look but these players have got to stay hungry and stay at this level of desire and wanting to win He's, uh, his first away game, because they've all been home games since Ten Hag's departure. First away game for Ruben Amorim will be away at, at Ipswich, I believe. The trip to Portman Road against Kieran McKenna, used to be on the coaching staff here at Old Trafford as well. Shogat Tire gets his old team, runs into Casemiro. It's all over at the Hawthorns. Here's Tom Gale. It's Brom nil, Burnley nil. Connor, unwanted history for West Brom. The first time they've drawn four of their opening eight home league games in a goalless draw. Burnley stay fourth. Jaden Anthony's second half header chalked off for a foul there. Four without a win. Full time, West Brom nil, Burnley nil. Thanks, Tom. Very much into the closing stages here at Old Trafford. Manchester United, two goals in front. More live football over the weekend here on Five Live. Wolves against Southampton. Our commentary game Saturday, 3 o'clock. We'll ultra brilliant full commentary of Brighton against Manchester City. That's the 5.30 game on Saturday. Then into Sunday, Manchester United back in action. Leicester, the visitors here at Old Trafford of the Premier League. That's a two o'clock start. You can listen on Five Live and BBC Sounds. And later on on Sunday, Chelsea against Arsenal is the blockbuster game, on paper at least, of the weekend in the Premier League. Again, you can listen to that game in full here on Five Live. You can listen to the EuroLeagues pod tonight. That's out at, what, about eight minutes' time? 10 p.m. release of the EuroLeagues pod on BBC Sounds and wherever you get your podcasts. As Bakayoko sends a crossfield ball cut out by Lissandro Martinez, who's looked very comfortable in that left defensive role since coming on as a sub in this second half. Pauk have given it everything they've tried, but they step up in standard. They haven't quite been able to match here at Old Trafford tonight. Shortatire on to Zivkovic. Zivkovic trying to return it in field, but cut out by Masrawi. There is. The final whistle, Ruud van Nistelrooy gets the job done once again. What a good shift he's put in as the interim coach. Not easy coming in to steady the ship. He's made it look rather easy and he strides onto the playing surface to take the acclaim. Manchester United fans will once again leave Old Trafford tonight with smiles on their faces, with dreams on their hearts. They're hoping that this is a team turning the corner. 2-0 they've won here, is he? Yeah, a good night at the office for Manchester United. I think in all in all, they were the better team. There was a few spells in the first half where Pauk threatened that Manchester United defensively were equal to it. And I think the performance of a certain individual in Ahmed, who got the nod tonight ahead of Rashford, certainly proved why Ruud van Nistelrooy does seem to have a very astute side to his man management. 
of picking a player who looked really hungry, really lively. And the captain as well, Bruno Fernandes, he had a very good game again. But job done, climb, climb up the uh, Europa League table and then over to the Premier League at the weekend. It has been a continuing narrative here at Old Trafford for a long, long time that this talented group of players were not seeing the best of them. A reminder tonight of just how good Ahmad is. He's been the match winner. Two goals from Ahmad Diallo. Manchester United have beaten Pauk Salonika by two goals to nil. And Manchester United up to 15th in that Europa League table as the result of their first win in Europe in 380 days. Izzy and Connor staying with us until 10 o'clock. Former Manchester United assistant manager René Mullenstein with us in the studio. First of all, that... That young man, Ahmad Diallo, how good did he look to you? Yeah, he, he was by far the best man, as he said it, Connor said it. But uh, the first goal, brilliant, brilliant header, uh, very clever header, looped it to the back post. But I was even more impressive with the second goal. He made that goal, and that's what I liked about him. His tenacity, to, the pressing to, to win the ball back, to hold on to the ball, then to dribble inside, and, and such a fantastic finish. Uh, he's a tiny figure, isn't he? You kind of... You like, to, you like to watch a, a, a small striker, something you can get in among, and, and Baba trying to defend against him all the time. Just looked like he was, you know, he didn't know where to go. He didn't no. know what to do. Was, I, I love those kind of contests. No, and that's what you, and that's what you want as, as players, the type of Diallo. You want to constantly give the, the opposition fullback a problem. Mm. That he constantly guess what is he doing now? Is he playing one touch, running in behind? Is he holding on to the ball? Is he dribbling inside? Is he dribbling outside? So that unpredictability is, is undefendable. And obviously for a, for a player that hasn't started a lot of the games today, he was magnificent. And, and the way is he in, towards, in that kind of final quarter of the game, United came back into it, because there was a point where Rennie and I were watching in the studio and thinking, Pauka back in this, United even giving, giving them space to play. There's an equaliser coming here. Yeah, and it was coming from, from the striker at the time, Tissu Dali, who found himself with an absolute tapping inside the box at 1-0 to Manchester United, and that could have changed the game. And that was the very moment where he got substituted off, so that was his last involvement. The dynamics of the game could have shifted very differently at that point, but nonetheless, Manchester United got away with it and they managed to push and, and find that second goal. I thought the introduction of the three changes that, that Reid van Nistelrooy made, and then obviously Xerxes and Martinez and uh, Mason Mount coming in into the game. I think they were effective. I think it was good squad management. Um, so all in all, a, a good night at the office of Manchester United. Yeah, I thought easy as well. Um, we're looking at the game around that 65, 70 minute mark, where I thought to myself, why is United again just falling back a little bit, you know, giving Parker all that, you know, that space to play and, and, and try to to create and carve a chance out. But a goal from Diallo came exactly at the right time and that was game over. But you said it, I think, before as well, and I do feel it is, it does feel like there was a different feel about the team, a different kind of energy, a yeah. bit of a, a bit of more freedom, you know, and go, but there's still this lack of I think a little bit of the quality in the final third. I thought today that there were plenty of moments where I thought they made poor decisions. But eventually they kept going. I thought the pressure in, in earlier the second half was really good. They kept that pressure up and, and then Diallo got the goal. So, uh, yeah, it, 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 it almost is like, it, you know, you start to enjoy again watching them. And, and Connie, you made a comment as well about after that second goal went in, the atmosphere on the bench, you know, Ruud van Nistelrooy and Darren Fletcher and the players around. And actually, you know, we were commenting on the studio, just chatting between ourselves, Rene and I, about, about some of the body language of the players, that that seemed quite quite low. But just watching the celebrations now on the screens here, there just feels like there's just a bit more of a buzz around the stadium yeah, and, and the you, team. You, you know when someone gets a massage on their shoulders, you say you're working out the knots. I think that's how <laughs> it feels for Manchester. This place has been coiled up. It's been tense. It's not been, you know, there's, there haven't been smiles on faces. They've all been grimacing and sort of, you know, squeezing their body. And then suddenly there's a little release and they look more relaxed. And I think that was summed up by the celebrations down there. Um, you know, th as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, there's so much talent. Even the coaching staff, the players, the, the young team coming through. Manchester United Football Club have been underachieving on a huge scale and, and that does bruise the egos of these people who know that they've got the talent to do an awful lot better and then when they get wins and they put little runs together like they're doing now in terms of not losing games that's when you see them in their natural habitat if you like you see the smiles return to the Ahmad is down on the pitcher getting interviewed and he looks absolutely delighted with himself 
Um, yeah, th th there is a mood shift here. That I'm, and I, look, I, I do. I think we should say this from Eric Ten Hag. I think he'll be looking from afar and he's thinking, "Well, hang on. Where was that work rate when I was there? Where were these wonder goals? Where was the man drilling it in from miles? Uh, Casemiro scored a world class goal in the League Cup last week. Where was that? Bruno Fernandes didn't score at all this season until Ten Hag left. He's now got three goals in his last three games. You know, Ten Hag will say it's all well and good that you're smiling and happy now, but. You know, wh where was that last week? Ultimately, it's the manager's job to, to get those performances out. Ten Hag wasn't doing it. Ruud van Nistelrooy is, and that, I'm afraid, is football. And I think, I think, Conor, as well, what you said with getting the nuts out of the shoulder, Ruud knew, I think, probably where those nuts were, and I think he's used his time really, really well to address the players, to speak to the players in a certain way. It's very clear Amarim is coming in, but he has said to the players, listen, I've got four games with you guys, and we need to fix those things because it needs to be fixed quickly. And he's done a great job. Thank you so much, Rene, again, for being with us in the studio. Thank you so much to, to Connor and to Izzy at Old Trafford as well.